Uh, good evening. I'd like to call the uh, Hingham Select Board meeting for Tuesday, May 18th, 2021 to order. This meeting is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access. Pursuant to an order issued by the Governor of Massachusetts dated March 12th, 2020, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the Town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. If any participant wishes to record this meeting, please notify the chair at the start of the meeting in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20F, so that the chair may inform all other participants of said recording. May I please ask that if anyone is or intends to record any portion of this meeting, to please identify yourself at this time by raising your hand. Uh, okay, seeing none, uh, members of the Hingham Select Board participating remotely in this evening's meeting are myself, Mary Power, and Joe Fisher. Uh, Bill Ramsey is on reserve duty and uh, will not be joining this evening. Um, the first order of business on the board's agenda is a joint session with the trustees of the Bathing Beach to fill a vacancy. Uh, we were notified just a few minutes ago that our uh, first candidate has withdrawn from consideration. So uh, we are going to uh, take up a couple of pieces of business until uh, our, can our next candidate arrives. Uh, the first order of business is the approval of minutes. Heidi has been really busy. We have nine sets of minutes. Um, Joe, I'm ready to uh, act on any of those that you are uh, ready to act on. I am ready to act. So I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes dated April 1st, 2021. Uh, second, any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary, aye. I'll make I'll... a motion to approve the minutes dated April 6th, 2021. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary, aye. I move to approve the minutes dated April 8th, 2021. Second, any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary, aye. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes dated April 13th, 2021. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary, aye. I move to approve the minutes dated April 27, 2021. Second, any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary, aye. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes dated May 2nd, 2021. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary, aye. I move to approve the minutes dated May 4, 2021. Second, any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary, aye. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes dated May 8th, 2021. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary, aye. And I move to approve the minutes dated May 11th, 2021. Second, any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary, aye. Thank you. Heidi, thank you so much for all these minutes. Yes, thank you, Heidi. Um, Tom and Michelle, I know we talked a few minutes before the meeting. I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball here because I do see that Jersey Mike's is on the line. Yes. And um, in order for, um, for them to perhaps uh, conclude their business with the town uh, as quickly as possible, um, I, might, uh, I might move to that. Hi, thank you for turning your camera on. Um, oh, sir, yeah. if I could please, good, good evening. Thank you for joining us. If I could please ask you to give um, your uh, your name and your position for the board, and uh, you're here to apply for a common victualler license uh, to open a Jersey Mike Subs. Uh, I understand it's in the Stop and Shop Plaza on 3A. So if you could just tell us a little bit about your business and what your plans are. Yes, uh, thank you for having me. Um, so my name is Al Graziano. I'm one of the owners of the Jersey Mike's uh, coming in Hingham. Um, and like you said, we're opening um, next to the Stop and Shop. Uh, we're planned and hoping to open next Wednesday uh, on the 26th, if possible. Um, so Jersey Mike's, for those of you who don't know the brand, we are a, a sub shop concept out of New Jersey, um, the Jersey Shore. Um, we're just an old school sub shop. Uh, Mr. Graziano, I think you've muted yeah. yourself accidentally. Really? I just want to... There we go. Whoop. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So um, we make 
you know, sub sandwiches fresh to order for each order that comes in the door. So we slice the meats right in front of you. We bake all our bread in house every morning. Um, yeah, just very simple, very simple sub shop business. Um, we have a few locations in the area, Hanover being the closest, Quincy down the road. So I know some people are familiar with those locations. Great. Well. Um, Tom and Michelle, I know Sharon Perfetti in our office is the licensing clerk for the board. Uh, I'm a, um, I think she's she's reviewed everything. Uh, all the necessary reviews are in place. Yep, yes, they yeah. are. Go ahead, Michelle. Okay. Nope. And they've received the other permits that they need from the health department, et cetera, so they're good to go. Okay. Joe, any questions? Is there any review from the police department that was done or needs to be done? I don't believe so. No, I don't think so. I haven't had any correspondence with the police department for, uh, you know, for any of that. Okay. I th yeah, no, I think no because other... it doesn't involve alcohol. Um... Yeah. Okay. Michelle tells uh, Sharon tells us that there's no police review required for for this license. Great. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Uh, are, are there any members of the audience who have a question or comment with respect to uh, the license for Jersey Mike's? Uh, seeing none, I'd accept a motion. Okay. Uh, bear with me one second. Um, so I would move to approve the issuance of a common victual license to. GQ Subs Hingham LLC doing business as Jersey Mike's Subs 400 Lincoln Street. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary? Aye. Um, sir, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for choosing Hingham as a, desti as a destination for your restaurant. And um, good luck. Welcome to Hingham and, yes. and best, of, best of luck to you. Thanks so much for being here this evening. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, um, just wanna, yeah. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. No, I just want to let you guys know that day one, we're actually donating 100% of sales to the Hingham Athletics Department. So um, we would obviously love as much support as we can get to, to give back as much as we can. Um, that's very generous of you. Thank you. And I believe that the Hingham Anchor is on the line, which is a, an important news source for Hingham. So uh, we'll ask our partner, Carol Meyer, to uh, get the word on that. So it's 100% of the proceeds and the opening date. 26, the next one. 26. And, and is it to the Hingham High School Athletic Department or is it a different organization? Yes, the high school. Yes, the high school. Terrific. Well, That's thank really you again. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, it's really terrific. Welcome to thank Hingham. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, Tom, why don't we go to the COVID 19 update? Um, you're muted. All right, how's that? <laughs> Every now and then. We're only a year and a half into this. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Mary. So our COVID-19 data, the number of categories today in this report um, for the COVID-19 data, as of yesterday, confirmed COVID-19 cases in Massachusetts totaled 657,119. The seven-day average of new COVID-19 cases in the state has been trending downward since early April. Uh, the state's the state positivity rate is also down to 1.02%, and the seven-day average of confirmed deaths from COVID-19 has dropped from 8.3 from a peak of around 175. So according to public health data from the Mass DPH released last week, the town's designation is now green. We had been yellow for a number of weeks. Uh, this green indication uh, indicates a lower risk of spread within the community. There have been 24 new cases of COVID-19 in Hingham over the past 14 days, and a total of 1,953 cases in Hingham since the start of the pandemic. The average daily incidence rate for the town of Hingham dropped to 14.1 per 100,000 residents, uh, and our percent positivity rate was 1.16% for the previous 14 days. Regarding a vaccine rollout, uh, according to the DPH's COVID-19 vaccine report, over 3.2 million people in Massachusetts have been fully vaccinated as of today. Connecticut and Massachusetts are leading the way nationwide in terms of percent of the population that, has, that is fully vaccinated. According to Johns Hopkins University, Connecticut is at 44.8% and Massachusetts is at 44.2%. As of May 11th, 
approximately 51% of Hingham residents have been fully vaccinated. We are proud of everyone and wanted to thank you for taking vaccination seriously, and we hope to see that number continue to rise. Regarding the COVID-19 testing center, back in December, the town partnered with Empathy LLC to open a COVID-19 testing center at 308 Cushing Street. The Empathy Testing Center has administered more than 19,000 tests for Hingham residents and our neighbors from nearby communities through the month of April. We are very grateful to Hingham resident Jackson Stone and his entire empathy team, as well as to the town staff and officials who work diligently to make this service possible. As usage of the site has decreased significantly in recent weeks, we will be closing the site and the last day for testing will be this Saturday, May 22nd, 2021. If you still need a COVID-19 test after this Saturday, tests are available at CVS locations in Hingham, Weymouth and Norwell, Walgreens locations in Weymouth and Rockland, and the Carewell Urgent Care Center in Norwell, among other places. Regarding the state's reopening guidance, as most people have heard, Governor Baker made a significant announcement about COVID-19 uh, and reopening plans for Massachusetts yesterday. The Baker Polito administration announced that the Commonwealth is on track to meet the goal of, the vac of vaccinating 4.1 million residents by the first week of June and that all remaining COVID-19 restrictions will be lifted effective May 29th. This means that effective May 29th, all industries will be permitted to open, all industry restrictions will be lifted, and capacity will increase to 100% for all industries. The gathering limit will be rescinded. The state encourages industries to continue to follow CDC guidance for cleaning and hygiene protocols. The Commonwealth's face covering order will also be rescinded on May 29th. However, face coverings will still be mandatory for all individuals on public and private transportation systems, including ride shares, livery, taxi, ferries, the MBTA, commuter rail and transportation stations, in healthcare facilities, and in other settings hosting vulnerable populations such as congregate care settings. Non-vaccinated individuals are advised to continue to wear face masks and to continue distancing in most settings. In making his announcement, the governor reported that new COVID-19 cases have dropped by 89% since January 8th. COVID hospitalizations are down 88% since January 1st, and the positive test rate is down by 88% from its peak of 8.7% on January 1st. Governor Baker has... Uh, Governor Baker also plans to end the state of emergency on June 15th. The state has pledged to work with legislative and municipal partners during this period to manage an orderly transition from emergency measures adopted by executive order and special legislation during the period of the state of emergency. This change has many implications for town operations, so we are working with council to understand and prepare for this transition. For more information regarding the governor's reopening plan, please visit mass.gov. And a quick additional, uh, additional item re the, regarding a local COVID-19 update, the town's incident management team command group that works together to, to determine the best approach that the town should take on COVID-related matters and has met regularly since the beginning of the pandemic has in fact uh, agreed to allow the July 4th parade to go forward. And, uh, and while we are recommending um, that anyone who has not been vaccinated to please um, remain masked and distance uh, themselves from others during the parade, we are in fact going to allow that to, to occur. So um, that's good news. I feel like the world is starting to breathe again. Um, just hopefully we all continue to be safe and remember that in fact, the pandemic is not over. So uh, with that, Mary, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Uh, Joe, questions for Tom regarding the COVID-19 update? Uh, no, you covered a lot and I'm pleased that the July 4th parade will now be allowed. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I would just add to to residents, um, yesterday's announcement from the governor was very significant, as Tom said, both for um, municipal services as well as for the school department. Um, we are all working very diligently to understand what this means and to pivot to what is going to be a very significant change. 
Uh, we thank you and appreciate your patience as we work through some of that information. Um, and uh, we will continue to keep people apprised through both the website and through these, uh, these updates. Is there anyone who has a question or comment regarding the COVID-19 update? Uh, seeing none, it is uh, 6.31. So we are going to now um, uh, initiate interviews with our colleagues on the trustees of the Bathing Beach to fill a vacancy. Uh, the board would like to welcome uh, Chair Alan Peralt, Member Ed Johnson, and we would also like to thank and acknowledge uh, Christopher Daly, who served as a trustee of the Bathing Beach for several years. Um, we appreciate Mr. Daly's service to the town. Um, the board this evening, the, together, we will be interviewing two candidates uh, for the open position. Uh, we'll begin, uh, we'll, we'll each ask uh, the candidates uh, a series of questions uh, for members of the audience, you are welcome to observe these interviews, but we will not be opening it up to questions and comments from the public. At the conclusion of the second interview, um, the trustees as well as the select board uh, will discuss and advance the nomination of a candidate. Uh, so with that, it's my pleasure to welcome our first candidate, uh, Mr. Bruce McElhoney. Um, Bruce, uh, the way we're going to kind of lead this off is um, I would invite you to introduce yourself to uh, the respective boards and to the public to talk a little bit about your background and to talk a little bit about your interest in serving as a member of the trustees of the Bathing Beach. So welcome and the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Mary. Uh, Bruce McElhoney, 6 Black Rock Drive. I've been a member of the Harbor Development Committee. I've aged off of that. I'm now a participant in the Public Safety Building Committee. Uh, so as part of my retirement, uh, I wanted to give back to the community that I'm in, and I've only been in Hingham for nine years uh, as, as a, a public servant sitting on the boards. I've worked with, with Alan and the Bathing Beach trustees uh, in a couple projects over the past couple of years. I enjoyed working with them. I was sorry to see Chris go. I wish the best to Chris. I worked. I did work closely with Chris on a uh, signage product uh, project. Uh, but uh, as far as my background, I've, uh, I'm, a, I'm a technologist. Uh, I did several startups and turnarounds. Uh, I've done uh, my undergrad work in California, and I did my grad work in Massachusetts. And I've been retired for four years. Best decision ever. So if you're always looking for it, Joe, Mary, retirement's great. And Mary, I know you're aging off the, the select board. Remember to fill out that talent bank uh, form so you can uh, participate. So that, that's a little bit about my background. And, and I, I know most of the people on the, on the Zoom call now. And uh, I'm free to answer any questions. My great, interest great. is on the uh, Baiting Beach. I enjoyed working with Alan and I... Uh, have some opinions about what should happen in the inner harbor. Thank you. Um, Alan, perhaps I'd invite you to ask a question, then we'll we'll rotate, go to Ed, go to Joe, go to myself, and then time permitting, we'll see where we are. Please, Alan, if you could lead off. Sure. Um, actually, your last statement kind of leads to one of my questions, Bruce, is obviously we've, in the last few years, we've been picking off some things from the original 2007 master plan. Uh, I guess my question to you is, what do you see as the untapped potential and what haven't we done that you think the town should be looking at? As you're aware, there will be a new initiative that was uh, in the CPC budget this year for Harbor Development and the, and, uh, the trustees to work jointly with uh, new planners, engineers. So kind of a general question, but what do you think, what are your own thoughts on that subject? So I, I have some thoughts. I hope 60K is enough. I'm glad Bill clarified it, that it went from Otis all the way to Steamboat. I think the best view of the harbor right now is from the mobile station when you pump gas. The best view from the harbor, if you can get out there, is from Steamboat Wharf. So integrating the whole inner harbor together with a nice walk uh, would be beneficial. So there's a physical and there's a digital footprint that's missing. So the physical footprint, if you look at the Inner Harbor, you have a collection of properties. There are no parks, there are no memorials, 
Uh, there's no iron in that horse. Bill clarified it is a bronze horse. Uh, so it'd be a, a, a drawing point. If you, if you think about what the citizens of Hingham want, it's a drawing point for a park or a nice uh, location to go to. You now have the, the Snapchat down there. It's going to be a magnet of people coming in off the water, going to get some food or just coming down into the uh, from the from your residence to the uh, the beach but there's no way to find out if the beach is open there's no way to find out if there's parking on the beach there's no way to find out if it's high tide low tide there's no way to find out if it's been tested if it's safe to uh, go swimming at the beach so the digital footprint is, wouldn't it be nice to integrate all the different types of web pages out there and everybody can make a web page, you gotta make it relevant. Uh, and when I spoke to Ken and to Kate, probably a year ago, it's, you know, the information is out there, but it's not all in one, one place. Uh, aside from the, the, the testing of the beach, you, you, there's no way to find out when the last uh, test of, of the waters on the beach was done. So on the physical side of things, wouldn't it be nice to have uh, a line item for Randy uh, to have enough money to keep the beach up to speed if it's raked every day, get some grass in there, uh, make it a true uh, destination for people to go to. So I see a physical and a, a digital footprint, and I see a collection of the property. There's no way right now to get to Steamboat Wharf, and that is the best place to have a picnic. Thank you. Um, Ed Johnson, would you, do you have a question for Mr. McElhoney? Uh, yes, Mary. Uh, Bruce, in your background, did you have any background in, uh, in the recreation anywhere, whether through high school, college, or any other jobs that dealt with recreation? Hmm. 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 I don't, I don't, none of the jobs I had, I would, put on recreation. It was always making money and, and getting to retirement. So I can't say, I, I did have fun working, uh, but I can't say they were in any type of recreation uh, components. I probably did, you know, when I was in high school, I was a lifeguard, I ran a beach, I, I knew how to, to schedule those things. And, but that was many, many years ago. Right. Okay, uh, Joe Fisher. Yes. So, well, Bruce, first, thank you for your service on the Public Safety Building Committee. Um, Sign think, those contracts. Yeah, I, I, I believe I was one of the uh, guilty people to get you on that committee. Um, and um, I am hoping that your interest in this um, activity does not indicate a diminution of your interest uh, on the Public Safety Building Committee. Um, None whatsoever. Good. But my question is, um, and it goes back to uh, the integration point that you raised earlier, uh, one of the efforts has been to try to better integrate the harbor with the downtown, yeah. uh, but specifically the beach. Uh, do you have any recommendations about how that integration should proceed or maybe shouldn't proceed? Uh, and particularly, you might want to talk about uh, transportation like bus service or you know other ways where there could be an integration yeah so I have some viewpoints on that the the idea of you know you have a physical barrier three days of physical barrier getting from from the beach inner harbor to downtown now that you have the coffee shack and the snack shack down there it's not always people going from the beach going to downtown uh, the town wharf isn't a very nice place or a spacious place to dock a boat and to go downtown for a stroll or to go downtown to get something to eat. Uh, up until a year ago, uh, it wasn't on Ken's website that you could actually dock at the town pier. And there's no way to find out if there's a slip open or if there's uh, mooring available at the town pier so you can stop take 20 minutes, go get a lobster roll, go get a pizza at Tosca Cafe, and then go back out on the water. Right now, people, once they get on a boat, they go over to World's End. That's their destination for Hingham. So you have a jewel in the inner harbor, and it's not just people going from uh, the bathing beach to downtown to go shopping. Uh, it's, it's people coming off the water 
to go downtown and go shopping. Also, I'm sure you've been taking your boats up, up to Laconia or to other locations. I'm, I'm right now sitting in the Wanda Fuca Straits in, in Seattle, and we take boats out, we dock at some place, and we go out to eat, come back, the boat's still there, and we go, go back across the strait. It's a wonderful place to integrate islands. You can do the exact same thing in the Inner Harbor, and that's just not available to, to the boaters right now. So I, I'm not a, a fan uh, to uh, get a bus service uh, going. I, I know that's been talked about in the town planning and there's movements for that and there's budgets for that. Just because I'm not a fan doesn't mean it's not a right thing to do. Uh, but I, I see a more integration of people coming off the water to go downtown and to get people in the, from their homes to go out to the beach. And it'll, once they're at the beach, can they walk over? I, I know you can't raise that little area uh, by the coffee uh, shack, uh, by the lights, to make it more, I'll call it, uh, I, I don't know what Alan calls it, uh, but uh, more user-friendly, get across 3A. Where, but if, where Red Eye Roaster is. Yeah, Red Eye Roaster. Okay. But, but if you can make it more, I'll call it safe, to get from the beach by walking rather than bus service, I think it is, is a better viewpoint than the bus service. Thank you. Um, Bruce, my, my question, I'm actually gonna kind of drill down on the um, on the, the footprint of the bathing beach itself. So yes. kind of the, the geography that is under the care and custody of the trustees of the bathing beach. As you think about the next few years, what's what's missing down there? Or what 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 sorts of things would you advocate if a trustee to um, uh, to improve the, the footprint of the bathing beach. Yeah, so, so the, the physical footprint of the bathing beach, if we've all agreed upon the, the, the line separating the selectman parcel and the, and the, and the, and the uh, trustees, the bathing beach uh, parcel, uh, it's, it's expansive and working in conjunction with the other parties and, and especially uh, HTC uh, to make it a, a a, just a better place to, to go. If you've ever tried to do yoga by the Iron Horse or by that, that fenced-in area, it's it's not very pleasant to do. So what's missing is, is physically upgrade the appearance and the features of it uh, to provide more places to go. If, if you bring your family down there, your grandkids down there, if it's safe to go in, they want to go to the water. They don't necessarily want to go to a, a, a playground. However, uh, if you, you're down there for an uh, extended period of time, having a playground area around there that's safe and that you can have and allow people to, uh, your kids to run around in would be super. So there's facilities that are just missing down there. Thank you. The first, the first step, getting a walk in there, getting the signs in there, people are coming down there. And, and with the new uh, Snack Shack, people will come down there even more. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, Alan and Ed, we have just a couple minutes remaining until our final interview. I might invite either of you if you have any final questions for Bruce. Uh, Alan? Uh, I'm pretty good, I guess, uh, and I think Bruce is aware of this, but we're obviously just a three-person committee, uh, and as such, it requires all three members to kind of roll up their sleeves. I mean, you know, when we basically have a secretary, a chair, and a vice chair, that's the three of us, you know? And uh, we don't have any staff. And uh, I know as a working member of the Harvard Development Committee, you were that kind of guy, but if you could address that, I mean, you know, we have to share who's doing the minutes, who's who's making sure the float's out there, uh, you know, the lifeguards is a responsibility. How can you touch on that, on you, working with a small committee and being productive? Yeah, so, I did that with the sign, so I, I, I'm, I'm fairly comfortable doing that. I'm selective on, on the, the, the uh, uh, talent bank applications I do put in. Uh, as you know, I aged off HDC, and uh, I, to, to spend more time on, on the Public Safety Committee, that doesn't mean I want to uh, abdicate whatever responsibilities I have on HDC. I still do that. I still talk to Bill, and uh, I still want to uh, do that. And, uh, if you do vote me on, and I, I hope you do, I will commit my time to do to to be a productive member of the committee. Okay. Thank you. Taking um, notes, 
filing everything and I know how to, to post minutes and I can do that. Okay. Um, Ed, did you have a final question for Bruce? Yes, uh, Mary. Um, Bruce, uh, at one time we used to have craft fairs down there and we've been talking about in past meetings. Uh, would you like to see something like that or some uh, other programs down there? So I think making the parking lot, making that area, what, whatever you have available to us, uh, more productive throughout the town, I think is the best thing ever. Whatever we can do. Uh, it, it's a, uh, I don't know if you've been been up to Gloucester and seen the fairs that they have and, and do up in Gloucester. I don't think, I don't see any reason why we can't do the exact same thing down at Hingham. Thanks. Great. Um, Bruce, thank you. Um, we are going to um, uh, go on to our second interview and we'd invite you to remain within the meeting after concluding the second interview. I think the uh, that we will uh, we will discuss making an appointment this evening. So um, again, thank you so much for for being here this tonight and thank you for um, putting your putting your name forward for consideration for the appointment. Well, thank you. I'll put myself on mute, take my video off, and I'll just listen. Great. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, if you could admit um, Ms. Ramsey. Uh, Adrian, good evening. It's Mary Power. Uh, we would invite you to turn on your camera and turn on your microphone. How are you tonight? Good evening. We're good. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, coming forward. Um, we are going to, um, uh, we actually, uh, you are our second and our final uh, interview for this evening. We had one candidate withdraw just uh, a little, a little, uh, a little earlier this evening. Um, we'll invite you to start out by introducing yourself, uh, we to, to the boards as well as to the public, to talk about your interest in being appointed to a trustee of the Bathing Beach, and then we'll take turns asking you some some questions. So, uh, invite you to introduce yourself and talk about your interest in the position. Thank you, Mary, and thank you everyone for inviting me here this evening. My name is Adrienne Ramsey. I live at 55 North Street in downtown Hingham. Um, I have had extensive involvement with the town of Hingham since I first moved here in 2006. One of my very first involvement with town governance was on the Harbor Development Committee. And as we all know, the Harbor Development Committee in 2007 was handed the last master plan for the Harbor area. And so I was able to serve on that committee when we started to look through different aspects of the Harbor master plan at that time. Going forward uh, in 2014, I think, I was appointed to the Recreation Commission. And since then, I've been elected twice for my position on the Recreation Commission. I have numerous other involvement with Town of Hingham, and I most recently have been on the Master Plan Committee, where one of the goals of the Master Plan Committee was that we continue to honor the coastal New England heritage of our town. In my personal life, I'm the mother of three children who all attend foster school. I'm sure that many of you know what foster school is. It's been a topic, I think, for everybody the whole entire year. I'm on the Teacher Appreciation Committee. We have wonderful teachers in Hingham, and that has been the focus of my PTO involvement this year. I also work at Babson College, which is in Wellesley, Massachusetts. I've been there for 15 years and I'm deeply involved in education. I'm an associate director of undergraduate admission, working with various populations, including um, our own students who are at Hingham High School. Great, thank you. Um, Alan Perrault, why don't you lead off with a question for Adrian? Sure, uh, good evening, Adrian, good to see you. Um, I guess one of the things I would look at, Adrian, I know you have the experience. You're probably aware we got, that the Harbor Development, the Bailey Beach Trustees got a, a, a subsequent grant from CPC to pick up kind of what where we left off. And I guess it's a two-pronged question. 
you know, your experience, which you already touched on, but how you would like you you're qualified to handle help handle that type of thing. And what untapped potential do you think we have? What things haven't we done there, or can we start to do that we haven't? That's kind of the overall question. Thank you very much, Alan, for that question. So, in my research for this interview tonight, I did review the 2007 master plan. And there were a number of things in that plan that your committee has been able to accomplish. Number one, the walkways along the beach that connect um, the beach all the way up to kind of the past the grove area and so forth and over toward Crow Point. Um, obviously the striping of the parking lot. I, that was something I forgot about that was so big is that putting actual spaces in the parking lot was a big part of that plan. And then certainly the marquee that the reestablishment of a working beach house that would provide a restaurant and that would provide, um, you know, bathroom, obviously post pandemic, those will be opening up. When I think about the untapped potential of that plan, I think to educational programming. So when I was down at the harbor on Saturday with my neighbors and our children, one thing my husband, my um, son, who's in the Hingham Militia, he was very interested to read all of the historical plaques that line the boardwalk. And so there's untapped potential to provide more historical programming down there, especially since we have the function area that is listed in the beach house. I think there's also potential for our school children, whether they be at the elementary level or at the high school level, to have more science opportunities down there. There were many horseshoe crabs, and as you can imagine, kids were very interested in horseshoe crabs. Having a child very interested in science, I know a lot about horseshoe crabs, so I was able to explain to the kids different things. But I do think that we can partner with our conservation officer, with our harbor master, um, and perhaps even on a higher level with the science coordinator for the Kingdom Public Schools to provide some events. One other piece that I just might add, I've focused a lot on school children as I'm with that population quite a bit. But I also have noticed people down at the harbor, adults, painting gathering together, um, having lunch and so forth. So I think there's also an untapped potential, especially as we become more accustomed for outside, for providing programming for our seniors with the Senior Center down at the harbor as well. Thank you. Uh, Ed, a question for Adrian? Sure. Uh, hi, hi, Adrian. Uh, thanks for uh, applying for the position. Um, Having um, worked with the Recreation Department, um, do you foresee anything, you know, we have a partnership now with the Recreation Department with uh, their supervising lifeguards now. Do you see any other potential there? Absolutely. So one thing we all know that during the pandemic, exercise on a beach became very popular. If you looked at Sandy Beach and Cohasset and the yoga offering, Paragon Boardwalk invited Cycle Town to put their bikes out. There's a lot of great ideas that came up about that. But with the fact that the beach house does have the room, I think there are many opportunities to have adult fitness classes, whether it be yoga, whether it be Tai Chi, there, there are a number of different ways we can do. I also would just add, and granted I'm biased because I have worked with Mark Terrell so, so long. He, he really is a great person to per think about synergies within different town departments. And um, one example would be this year, the rec department is running a camp where we go, the students will be going to Bear Cove Park and Wampatuck and World Bend. And why couldn't the harbor be in included in an event like that as well? Thank you. Uh, Joe Fisher, a question for Adrian? Yes, hi Adrian, how are you doing? Um, there has been uh, some talk and some effort to try to integrate the harbor and specifically the bathing beach into the downtown community. Uh, and I'm wondering if you have thoughts as to how best that can be accomplished. Some people have talked about maybe instituting a bus so that it'd be easier to commute from downtown to the beach and vice versa. 
uh, that may be a good idea, a bad idea, but if just, just your thoughts in general about the best ways to integrate the bathing beach uh, with the downtown community. So that's a great question. And you must have been listening to our master plan um, discussions about that one as we had lots of questions. People had lots of ideas about having a bus run from Derby Street to downtown and what would that mean? So I think one of the biggest goals in terms of accessibility and connecting the downtown is making it more pedestrian friendly. I live on North Street and I can tell you the amount of traffic that goes by. However, I enjoy the harbor greatly and I'm not afraid to cross the A with um, my children. But making, I know that the 3A task force um, has met many times and they're coming up and have already recommendations about how to make that corridor of 3A pedestrian friendly, how to mitigate traffic along 3A in that area. And so as we think about our environmental priorities as well, I do believe that working on the pedestrian impact, whether it be at the um, Burdett Street intersection, whether it be at the North Street intersection, whether it be when you cross down our Ave to come over on 2-3A and that area right there, that stretch where the sidewalk's a little bit narrow. Um, there are many opportunities for us to, to consider how to further make a crossing 3A a bit more pedestrian friendly. Thank you. Um, Adrian, my question has to do with the bathing beach footprint. Uh, what do you see as the opportunities to maximize um, the footprint and usage of the footprint, whether that's additional projects, additional programs? Um, if made a trustee, what would you focus on? So one very small anecdote is that the other day I saw, you know, a uh, uh, older couple coming to the beach and they didn't realize there was no seating, right? To be able to use the beach house. So I do think about seating at the beach house and do we offer more picnic tables, especially since we have a wonderful restaurant down there now. So that might be just something very short term and so forth. I know that there have been many other aspects um, that the P Baby B trustee had looked at. Should there be a playground there? What should be the accessibility to the beach for somebody who perhaps is bound to a wheelchair? And so I do think that there are many other physical attributes that can be determined. However, since the funding for the new Harbor Task or um, plan, master, Harbor Master Plan, you think after being on the Master Plan Committee, I wouldn't forget that term, the Master Plan, we should look at that and use that to see what best meets the need. Because we could put many things down there. For heaven's sake, we could put a splash pad down there. But that perhaps is not what we need. And I think we need to be very thoughtful because one of the things that we want to do is safeguard the coastal resources that we have right there at the trust, at the bathing beach. The most important thing is to protect that beach and to ensure that for generations to come, that people will be able to go down and enjoy the bathing beach. Great, thank you. Um, I think um, for purposes of time, I'm gonna invite Alan and Ed to each ask uh, Adrian one final question, Ed. Uh, yes, Mary. Um, we, we were talking earlier really about uh, having craft fairs down there. Would you want to see other things other than just items on the beach itself in, in the Grove area or, or, or in the park a lot? Oh, goodness. Um, when, when you say prep, practice, um, in terms, can you just repeat your question? I think it broke up a little bit. Ed. I, I apologize. Okay, uh, craft fears. We, we have booths with, uh, with, with, with people selling uh, crafts. Uh, years ago, we used to have them down there. Um, so, um, to have crafts like the crafts that you make? Yes. Oh, I think that's a great idea, and to be quite honest, um, because I do see so many people down there, um, you know, perhaps painting and getting together and embroidering and doing many other things. And so to certainly organize that on a, um, a level that 
we could have different town departments involved, I think that would be extremely beneficial to many people. Thank you. And uh, Alan Peralta, final question for Adrian? Yeah, just a brief one, Adrian. Uh, you're on the rec commission and you'd be potentially a bathing beach trustees. Do you see any conflict or how do you view that if you were to stay on the rec department? No, that's, that's a great question. So I did research it before because I did not want to violate um, any sort of state law about whether I could serve it. I think there's great synergy between the part, the departments um, in terms of the partnership, in terms of what the rec um, does have over in, at the um, Harbor Master Dock, uh, the kayaks, the paddle boards, et cetera, that are launched out of there during the summertime. Um, I Obviously, I think there are great synergies to be had. And I think, you know, my position as a rec commissioner um, at this moment um, is a benefit in some ways. Thank you. Um, Adrian, thank you. Um, and um, uh, we appreciate your uh, putting yourself forward for consideration. So at, at this time, um, I would, uh, I'm gonna to sort of speak to my colleagues here. Uh, Alan, Ed, Joe, we have, um, we find ourselves in a, a situation we often find ourselves in in Hingham which is that we have outstanding candidates and more outstanding candidates than available positions, mm -hmm. which always, um, uh, it's, we're so fortunate in Hingham. Um, I might invite Alan, you and Ed to offer any thoughts about um, an appointment for this evening. Uh, sure, Mary, thank you. Uh, I agree with you 100%. As both Bruce and Adrian were speaking, I'm thinking, boy, this is a tough call as far as their experience. I've known Adrian for years. My wife and she used to work, so I've known her for a long time. I've worked with Bruce. Bruce did a phenomenal job in, in really leading the charge on those harbor signs. You know, It was a committee, but it was a committee led largely by Bruce. Having said that, and I, I think these are two great candidates, and I'd hope if Ed and I have been on there for a while, so there may be another opening a few years from now, uh, not immediately, but that could be there. One thing we don't have, we don't have, I don't think mm -hmm. our committees is balanced. We tend to be, Ed and I are two older white guys. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of balance from a female perspective. We also don't have a, uh, a young parent on that committee. Um, I think Adrian brings a lot of things to it, not that Bruce doesn't, because you know I, I've seen Bruce at work, but I think Adrian has a perspective that we're lacking. Um, so in my case, I would say largely, I would lean towards Adrian, even though it's a difficult decision. Thank you, uh, Ed? Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to say the, pretty much the same thing to Alan, both excellent candidates, both I'm certain could do an excellent job. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards uh, Adrian also because of the young um, perception. Um, both Alan and I are in our seventies now, so <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting up there. So uh, it's uh, it, 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 I'm down there all the time, uh, especially on Sunday mornings, checking out, make sure every, everything for Saturday is okay down there. And 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 um, I feel we need some youth in our in our, um, our group. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joe Fisher. Yes, so I mean, I mean, in these situations, I would tend to defer to the committee on which the person will serve. And I think we've just heard for, from the two uh, committee members there, um, or trustees, I should say. Um, so I give that a lot of weight. Um, I also note that the appointment we're making this evening is an interim appointment. Uh, it is only until the next annual town meeting when the town meeting itself gets to vote uh, on who should be the trustee. Um, so um, with, with that recognition and recognizing that uh, we don't have an option right now of expanding the trustees to add another seat, so there'd be four, <laughs> then we could put them both on. Um, uh, I. I uh, share the views expressed by the two trustees, uh, and I agree uh, moving forward with Adrian. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that uh, Alan and Ed and Joe have uh, 
um, made all the points that I would make. Um, gratitude to both Bruce and Adrian, not only for stepping forward, but for all of your considerable service to the town. Um, and the very important work that Bruce is doing on the Public Safety Building Committee, Adrian is doing on the Recreation Commission. Uh, like Joe, and, and as, as my former colleague Paul Healy used to say, um, this is somebody that you have to work with. And so um, from, from my perspective, I see my role in this vote as really carrying out and supporting the direction you would like to go. Um, so with that, uh, Joe, I would accept a motion Okay, um, I would like to uh, move that the Board of Selectmen and the trustees of the Bathing Beach appoint Adrian Ramsey as a trustee of the Bathing Beach to serve until a permanent trustee is appointed at the 2022 annual town meeting. Okay, and uh, uh, would uh, Tom procedurally, do I second that or does someone from the Bathing Beach trustees second that? I would, for just to be safe, I would second it, Mary, to keep it within okay. the board, and then I would do All it. Right. All right. I will second that motion, and we're going to do a roll call vote. Alan Peralt? Uh, aye. Ed Johnson? Aye. Joe Fisher? Aye. Mary Power? Aye. Adrian, congratulations. Welcome to the Bathing Beach Trustees. Bruce, thank you again for um, for your willingness to serve. Um, I have a feeling that we're gonna be able to keep you pretty busy on the Public Safety Building Committee, um, especially with our next two agenda items. Uh, but again, our, our sincere appreciation to, um, to both of you for all the wonderful service that you give to the town. Um, keep that talent bank application there, Bruce. It, it may come in handy <laughs> in the next year or so. <laughs> um, Okay, so the um, the next item on our agenda is a legislative update with state officials, and we are pleased this evening to welcome State Senator Patrick O'Connor, Representative Joan Moschino, and Representative James Murphy uh, to the meeting this evening. Uh, once a year, we uh, we have a legislative update, and this is really coming at a good time given what's happening with respect to the budget, what's happening with respect to COVID, COVID relief, and, um, and also with respect to the governor's announcement, which I know has uh, yesterday, which is keeping us all busy. Um, I think what I, might, uh, what I might do is invite each of our three guests to offer some kind of remarks about, you know, what's going on, what you're doing, things that are, that are upcoming that we should pay attention to. And then uh, I'll open it up to questions from Joe and myself and then to the public. Um, if, that's, if that's acceptable to our, uh, to our uh, state senator and reps. Okay, and nobody's, nobody's stopping me. So um, uh, Senator O'Connor, maybe we'll ask you to lead off. Welcome and thank you for being here this evening. Sure, thanks, thanks. And, um through you, uh, Mary, to everybody on the Board of Selectmen, just thank you for all of the work that you've done. Uh, the last time that we've all come together was before the pandemic. Ob there's been obviously a lot of communication that we've had, but the last time we gave a legislative update was before then. And I can tell you the response that Hingham has provided and the South Shore has provided has been second to none. Seeing members of our community step up in ways that we never envisioned them having to and really supporting each other, developing organizations, working within the school systems. This has just been a incredible example of all of the safety nets that a community like Hangman has put in place for all of these years, and then having to use them uh, over the past 14 months has been really remarkable to see. And in, in my opinion, I think that Hingham is going to come out of this pandemic stronger than it get, went into it. And so that's really something. As far as what we're what we're doing, we are right in the midst of budget debate in the Senate. Um, we are starting that on Tuesday, so this week is kind of the period of time that we discuss a lot of the specific priorities that we have that we'd like to see each one of the 40 uh, Massachusetts State Senators. The House just uh, passed their budget uh, a few weeks back, and we're really looking out as far as, I would say that this is a very unique period of time where we're transitioning from the response to COVID-19 
to the recovery from COVID-19. And I think that that's a good uh, indicator with the governor's announcement yesterday where the state is ending its state of emergency soon and will be lifting a vast majority of the restrictions that are in place. And that kind of presents a whole new set of circumstances that we're going to have to deal with by sort of going through the things that have worked during the pandemic that we think can be adapted to post-pandemic life and those that we don't think are no longer necessary. So that's been a lot of our work over the past 24 hours. In this year's budget, and we do have a, uh, a, a presentation that we can get to if, um, if, the, if you would like, uh, in this year's budget, it's strong. Uh, we rely on some stabilization fund money, uh, but realistically speaking, we're going to come out of this pandemic as far as the fin financial strength of the Commonwealth uh, almost as strong, if not stronger, as when we went into it. One of the economists that we recently spoke to from Tufts that has created a new state policy center said what's going on in Massachusetts really defies economic logic, where our economy has grown over the past 13 months at a much faster pace than we thought it would during this pandemic. One of the good things is that that happened. One of the bad things is it really goes to show and identify where the true hurt and need it will come uh, post pandemic. The Massachusetts High Technology Council will give us a presentation probably about four and a half months ago, where it really highlighted that the major impact when it comes to job loss and uh, housing and food insecurity was amongst those who are making less than $50,000 a year. So we as a state really have our work cut out for us as we continue to transition from the response to the recovery in making sure that we make as many people and as many businesses whole as we possibly can. The American Rescue Plan, which the federal government passed, is going to be a huge, huge asset for both the state and local municipalities in being able to blueprint and really roadmap out a uh, appropriate recovery and, res uh, and, and response to COVID-19. Some of our priorities um, when it comes to the, the town of Hingham, uh, it's great to, that we were able to get foster school onto the Massachusetts School Building Authority's um, uh, first, first step that you need to take um, of a potential five to seven year process. And I know that the feasibility study um, is, is coming as well. So I'm just very happy about the work that we've been able to do. Collabor uh, collaborating with all of you has been great. Uh, working on the ferry uh, aspect uh, of, of things where that kind of came out of nowhere during the pandemic of the potential shutdown of the ferry. Uh, Representative Moschino jumped right in on that and, and led the charge. And uh, we were able to have almost weekly meetings. I know that Joe was uh, part of that. And it's just, it's really good. Uh, you know, it, it, I think these last 13 months, and I'll, I'll pass it off to my colleagues after this, you know, really highlighted the need for all these, all the communities and, and community members to work together and to put aside differences and to make sure that we uh, we're stronger um, than, than than we were going into it. So it's just been a, it's been a real pleasure over the past 13 months. I am so incredibly happy that this period of time is is behind us. You know, all of our offices transitioned very quickly to um, an unemployment um, distribution center, basically where we were taking intake from unemployment claims in the district and then giving them to DUA, which at that point in time was understaffed for about two months until we were able to staff them up. Then we transitioned to dealing with general concerns about where, where people thought we were in restrictions and phasing. And then obviously as we approached the vaccine phase, we went through that uh, about six and a half week process where um, you know, everyone wanted the vaccine. There obviously wasn't enough supply of the vaccine. And um, you know, that, that leads to some frustration from the electorate. But all in all, I couldn't have asked for better colleagues than uh, who we have both in the legislature and at the community level, uh, all of you are amazing. And we, you know, I, you know, in, in looking at other parts of the state and in other relationships that state legislative delegations have, as well as members of the community have amongst themselves, you know, we're, we're a really special place. And, uh, I'm so incredibly humbled and honored to be able to represent all of you and, uh, do the work that needs to get done on Beacon Hill to continue to provide you all the resources to make Hingham an even stronger place and an even better place to live, to work, and to, to raise a family. Uh, Senator O'Connor, thank you so much. I think we'll turn now to uh, Representative Moschino. Joan, welcome. Um, uh, 
Thank you. It's Pat's, covered, Pat's covered a lot of ground, but um, maybe you can start with kind of what's going on uh, in the legislature in, in the, and we'll, we'll let you pick up where he left off. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for uh, inviting us in. It's actually really appreciate that Hingham has um, our legislative delegation in. Uh, it's, it's great to have that um, excellent lines of communication and that ability to really um, keep up with what you need from us and how we can best serve you. Um, so I, I just wanted to start by um, congratulating the town of Hingham on a very successful town meeting. Um, I was able to attend um, with Congressman Lynch, um, and it really was very evident to me that it was the culmination of a year's worth of hard work and um, and very and you know a terrific advisory board and very thoughtful planning on the town's part and uh, it was really it was very interesting to uh, to be a guest a visitor and to listening to the dialogue and get a feel for the meeting and um, the robust discussion so I just wanted to say uh, kudos to all that work and congratulations um, on a really a very smooth town meeting. Um, we are, of course, at the ready. I think there were a few things that implicated um, home rule petitions. So um, I have no doubts that uh, once everything's certified through the clerk's office and uh, that council will be in touch with us and we'd be happy to continue to work with you to implement some of those things. Um, I did just wanna pick up where Pat was um, talking about um, the budget process. Um, so obviously the budget's with the Senate right now. Um, and I'm sure Rep Murphy will um, will speak to this as well. But uh, you know, I was really I was really proud of the budget that the House put out. Um, you know, from my perspective, it was very much a budget that invests in people. Um, both supports for, as, as um, the senator was saying, about the safety net services, but also investing in people um, and uplifting them, um, both at this time of need, but, but I would just argue in general. Um, you know, we had a presentation, um, but you can all read for yourselves, um, you know, the different line items where we were able to, to really um, increase some of that funding. Uh, over the governor's budget. And, you know, I, I feel like we did a great job with it, pass it off to the Senate, and I'm sure our colleagues in the Senate will improve upon it next. Um, the, the sort of important piece for me, at least, is the municipal aid. And I think the budget reflects um, the, the, the constant commitment um, by the legislature to supporting our municipalities with strong municipal aid with a consistent municipal aid and growing municipal aid so that um, it makes it easier for you to budget and to rely upon it and to, um, to know what's coming and to manage your own affairs, uh, your own financial affairs in that way. So we're happy to be in there and to advocate for, um, you know, chapter 70, chapter 90, um, you know, all of the local aid. Um, the other thing I did just want to um, mention was, you know, Pat touched upon this as well in terms of the revenues. Um, you know, we do track, as a delegation, we do track that very closely um, to make sure. And I, I agree with the Senator. I really do feel that um, it was very responsible in terms of the monies that we were able to, um, the, well, first of all, just in terms of the forecasting, uh, it has been spot on. Uh, which is very reassuring um, because this, of course, is a, you know a different kind of an economic downturn than we've ever had. Um, so it's been spot on, um, and so I think I feel like we can really again rely on the budgets. We don't have to worry and look ahead to things like 9C cuts than we've had in the past. Um, the other thing that I did also want to mention is that um, there have been like an unprecedented amount of grant opportunities coming out. And I think the town of Hingham actually um, does a great job sort of eyeing the, the ones that are applicable and, um, and applying for them. Um, but I have noticed that a lot a lot of the R money, or excuse me, what are they calling it now? AFP CARES and AIR, whatever, um, is coming down through. And I, I've noticed um, some of the grants that a lot more have been sort of popping out there. So I just want to, again, congratulate you for availing yourselves of the ones that are applicable. And I feel like you guys do a great job in that regards as well. And 
just remind you that when you're applying, um, most recently we were wrote a reference or a recommendation, whatever you want to call it, for um, you know for the um, Harbor Committee um, when they were seeking their um, the funding for their project. So just to remind you that if you keep us up to date, that we're happy to get in there and advocate for you um, with these eight state agencies as well. Um, just as far as um, the legislature itself, now that the budget is on the Senate side, um, you know, we have been taking up some things and given Hingham's strong commitment to um, its veterans, I did just want to let you know that today, uh, Rep. Murphy and I um, voted um, the soldiers home, the bond money for um, the, the building in Chelsea and for Holyoke. Um, and I know that's something near and dear to Hingham's heart. So I did just want to mention um, that we are moving forward with that. And uh, the Senate did include language to look ahead to regionally um, to what other kinds of um, facilities and services we might provide in that way. Um, so that was really great. And then for our business owners, um, we did also um, go back and take a look at the unemployment um, solvency fund. Um, so trying to um, get some relief in there for our small business owners in particular that they were hit pretty hard for that. So just a little tiny brief update um, from that perspective. Uh, before I turn it over to um, Rep Murphy, I just wanted to remind everybody, um, you know, we are in a, um, still remote, but our offices are all fully functional. If you need help, please call us. We are happy to provide constituent services. There's still a lot of people out there that have yet to receive, say, their unemployment insurance or a glitch has happened with the re um, with the re-eligibility um, paperwork, please call our offices. Um, you have three of us to pick from, or you can call all three of us. Um, but we are here to help, and we just want to remind you, you are not bothering us. Uh, this is our job, and we are happy to assist you. So, um, you know, just go to the uh, malegislature.gov website and look up either or all of our names. It will take you right to our page, and you can just email us or call us. So, um, the only other thing I wanted to sort of reference was um, Pat mentioned the ferries. Um, they will reopen on uh, the 22nd, and that is both direct service for Hingham to Boston, um, restoring some service to the airport, um, weekend service to Hingham Hall to Boston, um, and just a reminder that you do still have to wear a mask when you're commuting, um, either on public or private transportation. So um, I'm sure Rep. Murphy wants to give you um, his updates and take on things, and uh, I'll leave it to him to speak to an update on the compressor station as well. Great. Representative Murphy, welcome. Hi, everybody. So uh, thanks for having us again this year. Uh, a lot has obviously happened since uh, we spoke last year. The world was turned upside down, and hopefully it's on the uh, path to being turned upside uh, in, in the right way now. Um, so a lot has happened, as Joan alluded to, and, and Pat um, mentioned earlier, as did Joan. We, we act as a team. So our offices and ourselves are in constant contact with each other. And over the course of the past year, our offices have become a, um, a place where we could be called for help. So many people have called up you know, looking for unemployment assistance, uh, people who, who were laid off. Uh, then you had businesses that were shutting down, they needed assistance, and our offices jumped into action to assist people with that paperwork process. Um, unemployment assistance, uh, it was really inundated, Department of Unemployment with, uh, with requests, and Pat, myself, and Joan, uh, did the best we could to expedite anybody that call our offices to make sure that their claims got through and they were heard and hopefully they were uh, granted unemployment assistance. We did the same for businesses reaching out to us. As a small business owner myself, I know how difficult the past year has been on small business. Um, for those that have been able to weather the storm, we do think that um, the, that better things are on the horizon and that the economy obviously is bouncing back quicker than anybody could have anticipated. Um, and that's reflected in the House budget that we uh, did a couple of weeks ago. Um, and we funded a budget at $47 billion, which does not raise any taxes and uh, does not cut any services. So from a uh, monetary standpoint, cities and towns should be in good shape in regard to this year's budget. Now it's over in the Senate. Uh, there is also federal monies coming in, which will also be dispersed at some point um, in the House and the Senate are looking at ways in which that money uh, will be spent. Um, so looking at where we were a year ago, 
uh, last March to where we are today, I would never have thought that the economic recovery would happen that fast. Now, we do know that not everybody is part of that quick economic recovery. There's still a lot of people that are, uh, are hurting right now. And Pat, myself, and Joan are very well aware of that. And so we're here to assist anybody in any way that we can. Any of our constituents that need help, we're, here to, we're, we're there for you. So please reach out to myself, Pat, or Joan, or all three of us. Uh, between one of us, one of us always gets it done. So if, uh, if any of us have contacts, the others don't, we work as a team to get stuff done for the district and for our constituents. I'm chairman of financial services again this year. Uh, this is the first year of a two year uh, uh, cycle. So all bills are refiled this year and they're going to be heard over the course of a two year session. Last year in my role as uh, chairman of financial services, I worked with the commissioner of insurance and the commissioner of banking to make sure that when the economic downturn hit so quickly, that people were spared as much as possible. And what do I mean by that? So my committee jumped into action with the banking commissioner and the insurance commissioner to make sure that people that couldn't pay their mortgage didn't lose their house, to make sure that people that couldn't pay their credit card bill didn't get negative credit reporting on their credit report. And um, I worked with the banks in, the, in, in our community and throughout the state to make sure that they gave as much leeway to people as possible to pay the bills, hoping that the economy will turn around and people be able to get back to paying the bills on time. And I have to say the banking community and the insurance community were good about allowing people time to do that. And uh, they jumped into action to help people not pay their bills for a while if they couldn't without any adverse, real adverse effects. Uh, so we, my committee worked with the uh, banking and insurance industry to help with that. The other thing that was before my committee for many years was the issue of telemedicine. So telemedicine, you know, by virtue of all of us going on our iPhone or on a computer to, to see our doctors, it had always had a hard time in the legislature because it, it couldn't be figured out actually how it would be paid. Would it be paid for as, a, as an in-person visit? Would it be paid for on a different level that it's a, a computer type visit? But with, with COVID hitting so quickly and people needing to get to the doctors, my committee and my colleagues, Pat and Joan, and my House and Senate colleagues worked together to make sure that telemedicine became a reality for people. And that took legislation and it took government action and it took executive orders to make sure that that happened. So I, I think we saw last year the effect of a strong state government combined with the effect of, a, of, a, of town government and uh, city government. I can see throughout the districts where representatives and senators worked with their colleagues on the town levels and city levels to make sure that their districts were well taken care of during this time. And we didn't know what type of end game was in sight or how long it would take. But I do want to commend uh, the town of Hingham and all of you for taking part in keeping us informed and doing a great job locally and making sure that government continued and that your constituents would, were taken care of as much as possible during this difficult time. Thank God the... Um, you know, the uh, people are getting shots now. I got my second shot a couple of weeks ago. I got very sick from the second shot. I was surprised. I heard everything was all right. But uh, I was I was out for two days with it, with a fever and chills. And so I was surprised by that. Me personally, I had a baby during this time. So I have a new baby at home who was born last, last April. Uh, so... Uh, he's now just making the rounds outside to see people. Uh, he had no idea that there's actually people in this world other than the people in my own house. So I see his I look in his face, got his soccer games, a baseball game, saying, wow, there's more than five people in this world. I had no idea. So that's exciting for us. My wife is a nurse at Beth Israel. So she, wor she worked with the COVID, with COVID uh, patients. She's in gastroenterology. So uh, they moved all of those nurses down to the COVID floors and uh, to work with COVID patients. So that was a you know scary time for us, um, but uh, things seem to be getting uh, back on the right track. The budget we passed was passed unanimously, Republicans and Democrats coming together, as, as we do uh, in the House and in the Senate in Massachusetts. There is a very much a um, sense of bipartisanship on most things that we do, and I was very proud to see the legislature and state government act so swiftly. And of course, there's people that might disagree as to how things were done, but I think um, in light of everything that that we were facing, government worked and um, it worked well. Uh, we can always improve, but who would have ever seen that coming down the pipeline, what happened to us? Unfortunately, thousands of people died and got very sick during this time. We can never forget about that. Uh, but thank God, I believe we're moving in the right direction now. But I think the town of Hingham, through your leadership, on the board of selectmen 
and uh, with Pat Dye and Joan working on your behalf in the state house, uh, will fare pretty well in this upcoming budget in the year after. I think that revenues uh, are beyond expectations at this point, not even taking into account federal stimulus monies, which, which will be coming. So Pat, myself, and uh, Joan will stand ready to assist all of you in whatever we can do to make sure that Hingham remains such a great place to live and uh, work and raise a family. So I remain committed to Hingham and helping you as much as I can. And it's an honor representing you with my colleagues, uh, Joan and Pat. So thank you for tonight. Great, well, um, thank you to all three of you. And and before um, uh, uh, inviting my colleague, Joe Fisher, to um, uh, ask any questions, I just wanna thank all three of you for your efforts on the senior means tested circuit breaker. Um, you know, that was a special act that was getting, you know, pushed through the legislature and, you know, trying to do that while COVID was going on. And, and there was a lot of back and forth about the language and working through all that. Um, we believe that that is going to provide meaningful tax relief for some of our most vulnerable citizens. And it couldn't come at a better time. And um, we are so grateful to all three of you, as well as to members of your staffs who, um, you know, together just worked so hard on our behalf uh, to, to get that special legislation passed. So we really do appreciate it and it will make a meaningful difference to, we think, we think four to 500 um, of, of our residents uh, beginning this year. Uh, Joe, questions, questions for our delegation? Uh, yes, just I will keep it uh, limited. Uh, but again, thanks to our legislative team, because they really are a team um, supporting our efforts and we supporting their efforts uh, to keep the MBTA's Greenbush line and ferry going uh, and for the funding, especially for foster school. Uh, so I wanted to ask specifically about schools, because uh, we know that schools and learning were especially hurt by the pandemic. Remote learning had some adverse effects on academic performance. And my question is, do you see any increased support for schools over the coming fiscal year? Yeah, Joe, I can take this one. Um, so wearing two of my hats on Ways and Means as well as on the Education Committee, this has been something that we brought up uh, almost immediately. And the first thing they're focusing on is remedial efforts as far as this summer. There's a grant program that's been established at the state level to fund school districts and fund vocational technical, fund community colleges, to have them provide a lot of remedial courses where children who may have fallen behind academically can go and take these courses and try and help. I think that that's the first sort of short-term fix is what I'd like to call it. I had a bill which we actually testified today on before the Committee on Higher Education that would allow for any child who was in the public school system from the start of this pandemic until the end of the state of emergency at any point in time to have the state pay for them remedial courses. I think that some of the um, academic lapses aren't going to be caught until two or three academic calendar years go by. And when these children are starting to progress and, and learn new things and have to go back on the skills that they'd learned in previous grades to achieve the, um, the, those academics at that point in time, I think that it's going to really be highlighted then. So I think that we need to continue to, to keep towards that. Obviously, the, um, the ESSER money that's coming into our local school districts has been three funding rounds of that now. Um, I actually did have that written down as far as what the town of Hingham was going to get. So the town of Hingham, the first round, they got 128,000. The second round was 420,000. And the last round, which is the one that's going to come up next, which is through the American Rescue Plan, straight to the schools is $943,000. We know that that's simply not going to be enough to cover the uh, achievement gaps that have been created due to remote learning. But we know that that's going to be a huge um, a huge benefit financially to start the process in the community. On top of that, I think that the funding through the American Rescue Plan direct to the community, which is 2.4 million, and then to Plymouth County is 4.7, but my hope is that that's just a pass through and the town of Hangham will get all of that funding. Um, so there, on top of that, you know, is an additional $7 million, which the town can coordinate how they'd like to invest those funds. 
And then the last part of that is that the state has four and a half billion dollars that we're getting from the federal government. And so I, I, the education gaps that have been created by COVID, there's plenty of money, both at the direct to the school department, to the community and to the state level that we're putting it right now at a short term. We need to think about how we coordinate this long term. But this has been something that has been brought up from myself, Representative Moschino, Representative Murphy. We know that there are things that are going to be exposed by COVID that we don't even see yet right now that, you know, we're going to come down one, two, three years down the pipe and we're going to have to be able to address that. And I think that the biggest thing that we have to be able to address that with our financial resources, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, uh, financial resources are going to be the key to providing every child the opportunity to become whole from this, just as we did with businesses through the MGCC $668 million grant program, just as we did with individuals through the federal stimulus plan. We need a uh, targeted financial approach to make sure that no child is left behind from what has uh, occurred over the past 13 months and that every child has every opportunity to, to close that achievement gap, that academic achievement gap that may have been created from this. Thank you. Um, I didn't want to cut off the other uh, state reps if you wanted to add anything. I know Pat, Pat did a great job on that. I, I would say between the um, increase in local aid that the town will receive uh, along with the federal, the federal stimulus funds, uh, you know, usually during a budget year, it's, it's always difficult uh, when it comes to revenues, but who would have thought that a pandemic would bring such a windfall when it comes to federal monies coming into the district? districts, um, along with increased revenues for state aid. Uh, you'll, I know the House, and I'm sure the Senate won't do less than we did, but the, the House increased all um, education funds across the board. If you look at, I think Pat has a, um, some specifics on it. I don't want us to get into the actual numbers, but just generally, the House budget has increased most, if not all of the education accounts across the board in the in the town of Hingham will see those increases after the Senate comes up with their numbers uh, next week. So um, in, in regard to the kids that have had a difficult time during this, the House has all also uh, allotted money towards funds to help kids who got lost in the, the, the learning at home where it didn't work out for them. So there's going to be plenty of money and resources to get kids back on track who need the help uh, to transition back into the classroom and to catch up catch up to where they were supposed to be at, but were delayed a little bit. Um, in, in our district, there's a lot of kids, uh, especially special needs kids that had a difficult time working at home without one-on-one uh, -on -one time. So the house budget allots money to help these kids get back on track as soon as possible. Great, thank you. And I would just add um, to Jamie's point, um, you know, the circuit breaker is fully funded at that 75%. There's money for transportation, um, you know, that those are, some of the, the, the things that we are able to do each year to support uh, that become even more important now with the pandemic. Um, and I'd also like to remind everyone that we also uh, dedicate a lot of money to some of the um, external supports as well. Um, we saw a lot of food insecurity, a lot of house, obviously housing and insecurity. Um, and so, you know, thing, things like RAF benefits and, um, you know, helping connect people to, um, to those kinds of supports. Uh, it's really the tripod, right, that, that makes um, sort of healthcare and food and, you know, stable housing. Those are the, the tripod that really support children and learning and um, becomes particularly important right now. Um, but of course, your district has already embraced a lot of the, um, you know, social and emotional learning and behavioral health pieces to it. So, um, you know, the district is well the school district is well um, positioned to support these kids and with the, the financial supports that my colleagues were talking about um, and across that spectrum of need. Um, no, I'm pretty optimistic that we can, we can do this. Great. Uh, I'll limit myself to one more question. Um, we are having this meeting right now um, virtually uh, and we can do it because of the governor's declaration of an emergency. That declaration is now coming to an end, and our legal ability to have these meetings virtually, as opposed to everyone being in person, may be limited. And I'm wondering to what extent uh, there is action either in the legislature or, if you know, the executive branch to allow us to continue having these meetings so that can, people can participate virtually uh, on an ongoing basis. 
You know, I'll just jump in real quick to say that um, each of the, if you think back to this time last year when we were putting a lot of these supports in place um, to really enable um, our municipalities to do the work of government, um, there were um, there were sort of um, I don't know what you want to call them, like lag times on it. So if the state of emergency ended, then there was 60 days or so. I don't want anyone to worry that it's just going to immediately um, abruptly end. Um, that there are that there is built into um, the various components um, different um, different ability to, uh, to to continue doing business in this way um, because I do think that there is going to be time for tra we're going to need to transition back and get used to and figure out how we're going to how we're going to move across time to to do these things. I will say that I've already started hearing um, from people about the very question that you're answering, not like with a pre presumption of, of the answer, but asking that question. Um, so I do know that people are talking about it, but I'm gonna turn it over to um, Rhett Murphy because I, I think he probably has much more up-to-date information than I do, but I just didn't want people to be worried that um, it's going to end overnight. Thank you, Joan. No, these are all topics being discussed now. You know, the question is, what do cities and towns want? Would you rather continue uh, operating like this through Zoom meetings, or would or do you want to get back to the way it used to be with all uh, selection meetings done in person? Uh, those are discussions that we have in the legislature, too, because right now the legislature is shut down. We meet remotely ourselves, and um, we had an advisory go out this week to all of our House members to talk about uh, how we're going to proceed. We haven't decided in the House at what point we're going to open up, uh, we're trying to figure that out now. And um, a lot of what happens with the state of emergencies and then afterwards can be done through executive order, uh, done through the governor's office, or it could be done legislatively. I think that's a question that um, all of us have to kind of decide, how do we want things to continue? Should this always be an option uh, in regard to uh, having meetings this way? Or should we get back to just strictly in-person roll call votes having to be in the same room? So um, what COVID has done is change a lot of how we do things, obviously, even when it comes down to our elections, you know, for the early voting and mail-in ballots and collect, collecting signatures to get on the ballot through emails, everything's been changed. And so now, now that things have changed, is this how things should be or should we get back to the way it was before? So those are questions that we're gonna have to have on the legislative level at the state house. And we're gonna listen to what our districts want us to do and then try to decide what the new reality will be for people in elected office as selectmen, as city councilors, as mayors. So that's an ongoing discussion, which has been no, nothing nothing decided yet. Um, but we all have to decide together what's best for our constituents and what's best for government. I, I can say from a personal standpoint, um, we operated, we had special rules adopted in the house to allow us to continue. Our rules didn't allow us to, to uh, operate remotely. Our rules didn't allow us to make a phone call and and uh, vote. I mean, our rules go back hundreds of years. We had to get we had to get special authority even for us to operate to make sure that our government could continue to operate. I'm not sure what we're going to back going back to ourselves, but that's uh, a discussion that we're having now at the state house. So uh, we can continue to talk to that as a as a group, and so uh, we'll see what happens with it. So I, I can tell you just real quick that I heard from um, uh, Susan Sarney today that Lieutenant Governor Polito at her meeting this afternoon with the municipalities uh, and, and boards of health um, mentioned that she would be speaking with uh, the at the MMA's request, the Mass Municipal Association's request. She would be uh, looking into that question. Great. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And we really appreciate um, everyone's responses. Great. Yeah. Um, I just had a, um, a, a, requ a request relative to finances and then one other question for, for the three of you. You know, with respect to the American Recovery Plan money, um, as we put our budget together, we were, you know, it was being put together at a time when we were given um, estimates of the money that would be coming. And those estimates haven't changed, which has been very helpful. But we, we did... Uh, we did get some preliminary information as to the possible uses of that money. And when we plugged it into our budget, like a lot of communities, we used, we used a lot of one-time money to balance this year's budget. And we've also set aside some for future years because that's a very helpful aspect of the American Recovery Plan. As more information comes out about the possible uses of the money, um, 
anything that any of the three of you get, it will be really helpful for us to receive because what we wanna really do in pretty short order is just compare the sort of planned uses to the allowable uses. So that if we have to pivot and make any adjustments, we have as much time to do that as possible. Um, you know, so for example, we have money in there for revenue loss, but there's a formula and we need to do the math on the formula. Um, it's, you know, there's uh, use for uh, broadband, sewer, water. Those are a little less applicable for us. So any information that you get, it will be very helpful to help us manage not just this year's budget, but subsequent years, because to Senator O'Connor's point, we're going to be living with the impact of COVID for many years, particularly with respect to our students. And um, uh, as, as uh, Joan saw at town meeting, town meeting uh, supported our budget, which was a unanimous joint recommendation of advisory school committee and select board. Um, but um, uh, we, we don't have a way to pay for some of those resources next year. There's a possibility that some of this funding could be used. We just, again, have to find out kind of how it's used. Um, the other question I had relative to, you know, some of the COVID restrictions, one thing we've heard from a lot of our residents, and you've probably heard from other constituents, is people really like the outdoor dining. Um, and, you know, they, they like the experience. And also, we know that many of our restaurants, um, are. it's really going to take some time for them to recover. T to what extent is there any conversation about extending the outdoor dining beyond the 60, I, I believe under the governor's order, it expires 60 days after the state of emergency is lifted, which would put it like mid-August. Is there any discussion of extending it beyond that time? Yeah, in the uh, in the Senate budget that we're going to be debating next week, there is an a, um, outside section amendment that is being offered that has strong support to lift those um, sort of the, the sunset clause with the restaurant outdoor dining. I don't know if it's going to pass in this budget, but I can tell you that the amount of emails that we've received from the time in which that the governor has declared that the state of emergency will be ending in short order has predominantly been from restaurant owners, from restaurant associations, just saying, you know, we found something that worked. This is going to be one of those things, the same with telemeeting that we have and telemedicine that, that Jamie brought up. There's some things that have really worked and have really stuck in our the fabric of, of who we are. And I think that outdoor dining is one of them. I think that given the opportunities to, you know, cordon off an, well, an area and, and provide that to a customer has been phenomenal during COVID. And I think that people will still expect and want that post pandemic. And that's going to be something that we're going to address. I think that it's almost unanimous the the support level for it i haven't heard anyone that's opposed to it i know that the, the cocktails to go which was also a part of the sort of um, providing restaurants more tools to make money during this period of time i can see that being um something that we rescind just because i know that liquor stores and um other beer and wine outlets have complained that 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 could be eating into their profit in the future so that could be something that we look at totally differently but in the same regard allow them to continue to do the outdoor dining while maybe um, taking back some of the other things that, that we were able to put out there. And it's just going to be one of those things where you, we look at it as a whole and it's going to have to be looked at relatively quickly with the progress that we've made in, in vaccinations. But I think over the next uh, few weeks, we'll have conversations when it comes to all of these things. And as far as their prospective shelf life in Massachusetts or in, you know, for, for instance, with, the outdoor dining or if this is going to become part of the norm and I'm, I'm in full support of it. I think it was a great um, added thing that we were able to give to restaurants during this crazy period of time. It's worked and, you know, we have great weather here for a very short period of time. We should be encouraging our restaurant tours to think out of the box and, uh, and continue to offer this, in my opinion, great amenity for our residents. Great. Thank you. Um, I think at this point, uh, I would invite any members of the audience who um, had a question for any of our legislative leaders. Um, if you're interested, if you could please use the raise hand function. Okay. 
uh, I'm, I'm not seeing any, which tells me that this was very comprehensive. And, um, you know, just listening to the three of you talk about all these different subjects, it, it is once again a reminder how fortunate we are as a, as a town to have um, the three of you working together and involved in so many different aspects of state government that reflect many of the priorities and concerns of the residents of Hingham. Um, the, the teamwork, particularly in the last year, um, and the communication has been outstanding, and we are just uh, so grateful to uh, to all three of you. Senator O'Connor, I think you maybe um, have some sort of a presentation. I might ask if you could, if, if there is, I think there was a document you were referring to, if you could perhaps send that to Tom or Michelle, uh, that would be helpful for the board to have, and we could also post it on the town website uh, for those who are interested. Mm -hmm. Terrific. John? Okay. Um, well, so a little bird whispered in our ear that uh, this is your last meeting and that it would be remiss of us if we didn't um, pause before we concluded um, to take a moment to acknowledge um, that you're stepping down after um, two very successful terms as, as a select person and um, to really just thank you um, for your public service. Um, honestly, it just truly has been such a pleasure um, to work with a professional of your caliber. And really, your public service has just been marked by leadership, um, by dedication, such wonderful community spirit. Uh, it's really inspiring to watch you work. And truly, Hingham should count themselves blessed to um, benefit from your knowledge, your expertise, the steady hand, um, your wonderful warm way. And uh, it's always with the community's best interests at heart. Um, and, I, and I know that Hingham is very lucky and they will benefit from the fruits of your public service uh, for many generations to come. And so um, we did take a moment um, to have a, a citation um, that we want to, will I'll drop by your house at some point, um, um, signed by, um, by the three of us. Uh, well, I'm sure the Senator has one from the Senate as well. Um, this one happens to be from the House of Representatives signed by myself and Representative Murphy. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that we marked the occasion um, for the dedication and the commitment to the Hingham Board of Selectmen and all that you've done for um, our for our great town. Um, so I just wanted to say congratulations. Um, you look incredibly relaxed. I'm jealous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Damn it. <laughs> and I just want to turn it over to uh, to Jamie and then to Pat um, to share their thoughts uh, at this auspicious moment. Thank you. Yes, I, I want to thank you personally for how kind you've been to me over the years. As you know, I represent Precinct 2 and have for a number of years now, and I've always been uh, uh, struck by your warmth and uh, your friendly face and your smile, and uh, you're just a great person to work with. A little crazy. Anybody that puts a name on the ballot nowadays might be a little bit crazy, uh, all, but uh, you have that look in your face like Joan said, that anybody that leaves office suddenly looks like the weight of the world has taken off. The <laughs> I see that on my colleagues' faces, and I see that in your face without looking at you. So, um, but I want to thank you uh, for everything, everything you've done for the community, for uh, working with us as a team, and making myself, Pat, and Joan look good by keeping us informed to everything you know. Um, of course, you probably didn't tell us everything, but you helped us be better representatives by staying in, in touch with us. Um, and I know you and Joan go back a long way, so I can say that if you're a friend of Joan's, that speaks volumes to me as to who you are as a person. Um, I hate to see you go. I hate to see anybody go that does as good a job of you, as you, but we all know in this business when it's time to go, you know it, and evidently it's time to go. I'm sure you're not going too far, but um, I want to thank you for everything you've done. Um, you've been a good friend to me, and I've always, been, uh, I've always admired your work in the community, and I wish you the best of luck in, in anything you decide to do, and I know I'll see you around you're not going very far but thank you for all of you all the work you've done uh, for the town of Hingham and uh, so good luck in everything that you move on to from here which I'm sure are going to be great things thank you Goodbye. very much
if you look at the citation, the House citation is much cooler than the Senate citation. <laughs> right. we have, look at, yeah. see, <laughs> way better than the Senate. <laughs> The citations are a small little thing that looks like you print off from your computer, but the house citation. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Pat. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> so, so we have this nice gold album citation. Kept it up for tonight. Uh, Mary, it's it's been a real honor. Um, you know, the, I started five years ago uh, in this in the state senate, winning in, in a special election, and um, it almost coincided entirely with your term and. To be able to to work with you during this these past five years has been awesome. Uh, you, the way in which that you go about um, tackling an issue, I think, is one of the most fair and thorough ways that a local elected official can do it. And you know, just trying to work together to to bring people together to provide solutions to problems. I've always thought is government in its truest form and that's exactly what what you've been able to do and working with different board members and i know i saw paul i see paul in the, my bottom right hand corner working with different board members and seeing uh how incredible you all work together really goes to show and i believe is testament to why hingham's a marquee community and i've always i've always called it that and it's not just here on the south shore of the state i think that hingham is a, is a shining example for a community of your size for anyone across the entire United States of America. Hingham just does it right. Um, you take your time, you're deliberate, and you get things done. And it's because of leaders like you that Hingham is in that position. And Hingham has been incredibly, incredibly lucky to have you and your talents uh, for the past six years. And not just at that level, but you know, working it with the issues with Plymouth County over the past year, you know, it, it was of no surprise that when those things popped up that, that you were a voice to talk to on that, that you had a leadership role and that you were um, working with them and, and playing a big role in the MMA and just in various other things. You know, I know that, um, this job goes well, well above and beyond what, um, what people see, you know, generally that a lot of this work goes behind the scenes. It's the meetings you attend, the reports that you read. Uh, I have been just incredibly impressed by you as a, as a leader in the community. And that's why it was an honor. One of the things that, that we're able to do. And I always say it's probably one of the coolest things that we can do is, um, hand a name over and a recognition of somebody special in the community to our clerks and then the clerks are able to to draft up one of these citations and that we're able to present it to you i wish we could do it in person uh, but we have one and that's um in recognition of your six years of dedicated service and for your out leader, outstanding leadership uh, in this community uh, as i said hingham's as we've all said hingham's incredibly lucky to have you and just thank you for for everything that you've done um well thank you to all three of you for your kind words and um, especially coming from three people who I admire so much. Um, it has truly been a pleasure, and um, I know you will continue to support this community and, and the other communities that you serve. Um, as, as Rep. Murphy said, it's a little bit of a challenging time to be in public service, and all of you have been at this um, a lot longer than I have. Um, I admire your dedication and your willingness to continue um, to keep moving forward. And as we talk about how the Commonwealth has fared and um, particularly over the last year, uh, so much of his is, is due to many dedicated servants. And it's just been a privilege and an honor to to work with the three of you. So thank you. And, and thank you again for being here this evening. This is always a, it's a, it's a fun thing to put on a meeting agenda to just um, hear about what's going on uh, you know, what, what's going on outside of Hingham. So thank you again very much. Our pleasure. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Joe. Thank, thank you. Okay, uh, next item of business on the agenda, we have two contracts to sign that are rel that relate to the uh, warrant article uh, passed at town meeting for the public safety facility. Uh, a contract with Kessel Booz for design development and with Hill International for owner's project management. We're joined by uh, town engineer J.R. Fry and our procurement director, Kathy Riley. Uh, J.R., I think I'm supposed to hand this over to you. Is that right? Tom's um, nodding. I'm... Yes, sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... You know, we've been in active negotiations uh, 
you know, primarily uh, Bob Garrity has been leading the charge um, in identifying uh, how the contract should be structured and determining uh, a fair price for the services that are being rendered. Um, we are taking, uh, I should say the committee uh, is taking serious note of the comments that were uh, provided during town meeting as they should, uh, because it was uh, good commentary and, and represented um, you know, some uh, views that uh, we respect and, and understand. Um, with, uh, with that said, uh, we have arrived at what we believe is uh, a very good contract with KBA uh, and with Hill. Um, with KBA, it, it did involve some uh, renegotiation of some of their anticipated scope, as well as um, adjusting how their, some of their funding was uh, uh, applied uh, to account for uh, what we would like to see in terms of um, a little bit of a hold back to guarantee a commitment throughout the entirety of the project. Um, and so, uh, you know, we present to you the, the contracts that uh, have been prepared. With Hill, um, the, and I, so I will say this, uh, with respect to KBA, uh, the KBA contract, uh, the current appropriation provides for funding for KBA up through design development services only. The remainder of the fee is negotiated and agreed upon. However, it remains subject to future appropriation at another town meeting. Uh, on the Hill side, the uh, actual funding that was appropriated will carry us, uh, will carry us through all the way um, through construction documents uh, and bidding. However, it's a time and materials contract, so we will only use those services up through design development until, unless uh, we receive approval at a future town meeting for those future services. Okay. And JR, with respect to the um, contract with Hill International for yes. $220,000, Approximately what percentage will go through kind of design and development? Is it is it like half or more or less? I would say uh, roughly half, uh, maybe a little less, maybe about 40%. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joe, questions for JR or Kathy uh, relative to these contracts? Uh, yeah, thank you, and thank you, JR. Um, I mean, I've, I've reviewed the contracts. I know uh, that in the KBA contract, there is language specifically saying that uh, the designer will not perform design services on subsequent phases unless the town has approved funding authorizations. Uh, there is similar language in the Hill contract. Uh, so I really appreciate that you've uh, respected, as I knew you would, uh, the, the limitations that uh, town meeting uh, has imposed. Uh, and it's also clear that this group, namely the, the select board, will be keeping a vigilant eye to make sure that we are looking at energy efficiency issues, the impact of, the, of our carbon footprint. Uh, all those things will be uh, part of our review, and I know part of the committee's review uh, as they move forward with the project. Uh, let me ask, I, and I think I know the answer, have both of these contracts been reviewed by a town council? Yes, they have. Um, and um, I believe, and based on my understanding, that they are consistent with uh, the town meeting votes. Is, is that correct? That is correct, yes. Um, and just um, one final question, and I think, again, I know the answer. Um, with respect to Castle Booths, um, are you, as, as the committee, satisfied with their with their performance to date uh, on the project? Yes, we've been very satisfied. They've been very responsive 
uh, to our requests for information. Uh, they've been very responsive to, you know, specific, maybe outside the box thinking and in terms of delivering the feasibility study in a timely manner uh, that demonstrated that, for example, that the purchase of the property was in the town's best interest. They did a commendable job. Great. Thank you. No other questions. Uh, is there anyone in the public who has a question or comment with respect to these contracts? Uh, okay, seeing none, Joe, I'd accept a motion. I move to authorize the town administrator to sign the contract with Castle Blues Associates for the completion of schematic design and design wow. development document phases for the public safety facility project in an amount not to exceed one million one hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary, aye. And uh, I'll make a motion to authorize the town administrator to sign the contract with Hill International for owner's project management services for the schematic design and design development phases of the public safety facility in an amount not to exceed $219,660. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary, aye. Um, Kathy, JR, thank you. Um, I also see Paul Healy from the building committee who's on the line. I know that the entire building committee uh, did a lot of work to, uh, to vet these and bring them forward for consideration. We know you are anxious to get working on design. Uh, we appreciate your responsiveness to the feedback that we heard at town meeting and we look forward to getting continuous updates as this product project advances. I also see um, another committee member, Donna Smallwood's on the line as well. And Mr. McElhoney joined us earlier this evening. So thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the complete streets policy. Uh, for those who were in attendance at our meeting two weeks ago, uh, J.R. Fry presented the complete streets policy. Uh, the board had some discussion Council had an opportunity to look at it. Um, at JR circulated an updated draft policy to the board last week. Um, Michelle, am I correct that you got some feedback from Bill Ramsey? I did, I spoke with him and he has no issues with it going forward. Okay, uh, Joe, I know you had a number of, of questions. Um, I guess I'd, I'd open it up to you for any questions or comments for JR. Yeah, so the questions that I had uh, focused specifically on uh, making sure that the select board uh, continue to have uh, oversight authority and control uh, with respect to the project. And it looks like the changes that JIHAR has made um, have specifically addressed those concerns. So um, I am comfortable with moving forward with this. Uh, as, as am I, and I had indicated that to JR last week, uh, is there anyone who has a question or comment with respect to the complete streets policy? Uh, seeing none, Joe, I'd accept a motion. I move to adopt the complete streets policy as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary, aye. Thank you. Um, public comment on items not on the agenda. Uh, seeing none, uh, we'll go to town administrator reports. Michelle? Yes, I have three short ones tonight, Mary. Um, the first is on behalf of our water superintendent, Russell Tierney. Let me just share this. He wanted to make sure that the board and the public was aware that the Ware River Water System has received a 2021 Public Water System Award from the DEP. Um, and this is for outstanding performance and achievement in the medium and large community systems category last year. So he just wanted to share that good news with the board. That's great. The second one um, is a reminder about the election. And I know that our town clerk, Eileen McCracken, is on the line tonight. So the town election will be held this Saturday, May 22nd, and the polls will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Today was the last day to file a vote by mail application and mail-in ballots are due by 8 p.m. on Saturday. People are welcome to drop them off in the drop box at the end of the town hall driveway and the clerk's office will be checking that box all day Saturday to make sure that those ballots are counted. 
And then the last quick report was about the Battle of Grape Island video tribute that a lot of staff and volunteers worked on. Um, so this past weekend, the video tribute commemorating the Battle of Grape Island premiered on Harbor Media's public channels, Verizon HD 2131 and Comcast 97. Um, this was a collaboration between Harbor Media, the Department of Veterans Services, the Hingham Historical Commission, Hingham Historical Society, and many other town staff and citizens, including Mr. Healy. Um, the video commemorates the events of May 21st, 1775, when, British, when a British force landed on Grape Island and began loading their boats with hay and livestock obtained from a, the farm of Hingham loyalist, loyalist Elijah Levitt. The Hingham militia exchanged fire with the British and drove them from Grape Island. Um, the video will air again tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. for those who missed it, and it could also be viewed through Harbor Media's YouTube channel. We'll make sure to post a link on the town website as well. Thank you. And I would note that um, uh, our colleague Bill Ramsey's son, Jack, I believe is the newest and youngest member of the Hingham Militia. He is. So uh, we, uh, we, were glad, we were glad to see that. Tom. So I do have a report tonight, Mary. I'm gonna ask you to uh, be patient with me and perhaps turn over your gavel for a little while because I believe some of um, your biggest fans have gathered to, uh, to, um, to say some words regarding your, uh, your time on the Board of Selectmen. So I'm gonna respectfully ask you to give me power for a little while. I promise to give it back. <laughs> if, I, if I had a gavel, I would give it to you, but I don't know how we would do that virtually anyway. Thank you. You're below me in the screen, so here you go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, I, as again, we have a we have a lot of people here that really want to express to you uh, what they all um, think and feel of about your time on the board and your your leadership in town for all these decades. Um, but I, we have a we have a a, pro, uh, a list that we're going to follow um, in true Hingham form. We have a process. <laughs> we're going to follow it. This is Mary Knight, so we're going to follow a process. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to start with um, with our senior our, our next senior member of the board of selectmen, Joe Fisher. Thank you, Tom. So I'm actually going to start with our junior member, which is Bill Ramsey. Bill Ramsey, who. Uh, unfortunately is not here this evening, sent in comments and I will read them um, exactly. Mary, again, this is coming from Bill. Mary, I remember the first meeting, I remember first meeting you during our time on the July 4th parade committee many years ago, and then working with you the following year on the zoning permit study committee. Even as far back as those early years planning the parade I remember thinking that you would be leading our town one day. I cannot thank you enough for encouraging me to run for the select board and for your tremendous leadership this past year. I have learned so much from you about the town, but more importantly, I have always admired the way you have treated every resident with whom you have interacted with respect and dignity. While there are many who say that your legacy will be your vast financial knowledge, I would argue that your town service will be remembered for the tremendous kindness you displayed towards all of our town's citizens. You have made a difference in the lives of thousands of people and you leave the town in a much better place. For that, you will always be remembered among the greatest select board members in our town's history. I am honored to have served with you, your friend, Bill Ramsey. Thank you. Um, so now I'll go into my comments, Mary. My comments uh, in many ways track Bill's comments, but before I talk about the similarities in our comments, there are some differences. First, I'm asking myself why you encourage Bill to run for select board, but you would never encourage me to run. <laughs> Mary, should I be jealous of Bill or was this just minor oversight that I should ignore? Um, second, while I agree with Bill that you have vast financial knowledge of town finances, and that you have displayed tremendous kindness towards all of our town citizens, I think you have another incredibly valuable talent that has been of great benefit to the town. Mary, what you bring to the table every day and at every meeting is an overriding ability to prioritize issues, to recognize what is truly important, what will have the most impact 
on the town's residents, and you make sure that those truly important issues are handled responsibly and in a timely manner. That is the essence of town government, and you have led the way for all of us. My final comment, at least for now, concerns your skills at developing and cultivating a consensus among different people or among different groups to achieve a shared goal. Sometimes each of us can get caught up in our own perspectives, in our own way of viewing the world, so as to lose sight of the bigger picture. It can be easy for each of us, for any of us, to fall into the trap of believing that our way is the only way to proceed. We must be right because we've thought it, we've thought about it a lot, or because we're smart, or because we've enjoyed success in the past. But sometimes the myopic focus of our own way crowds out a better way to move forward. Mary, what I've seen in you and what I hope I've learned from you is to refocus attention in the direction of common goals concerns about pride of authorship or about fear of trying something new or working with someone new should not be allowed to stop us from achieving great things for this town. Mary, you've taught me a lot and I will miss you on the select board. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, our next on our agenda is Ms. Monsecure. Thanks, Tom. Oh, Mary, I don't know where to begin. Um, <laughs> I'm going to miss you so much. I, I had the distinct pleasure of starting my career here in Hingham under what I will call the Dream Team Select Board, which was you, Karen, and Paul. <laughs> and not to take away from, from Joe or Bill or any future members of the board, but my first board will always be different. You guys were the ones that welcomed me to this town. And, and you in particular, even before I started, you sent me an email um, before my first day, welcomed me, introduced yourself, congratulated me on my upcoming wedding. And that was my first peek into the privilege of, of what it is to serve with people of your caliber in this community. Um, over the last three years, I've been really fortunate and grateful for your steady support, both professionally and personally. I, I lean on you and you, you guide me when Tom's out. Um, you've become an important role model and, and mentor for me as well. Um, I will miss texting Tom things like, the word boss or the or power don't play in the middle of board of selectmen meetings when your <laughs> command of these public forums has been particularly impressive um, or maybe sometimes just three flames after the meeting <laughs> you poured so much of your heart and time and expertise into your public service and the town is much stronger because of it um, i know that you care deeply about the town but also about the people who work as staff and volunteers behind the scenes, trying to make sure that everything is moving in the right direction. And I have to say as staff, we always feel like you have our back and your thoughtfulness and your compassion is noticed and appreciated by us all. Um, it's been a tough year. I hope that this next chapter in your book brings you some time to rest and recharge. You deserve it. So thank you so much for all that you've taught us and, and all that you've done for us. Thank you, Michelle. Very nice. Thank you, Michelle. All right, so Mary, I'm going to read mine now, but I'm going to turn off the screen because I can't look at you while I read it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so to Mary, my big sister, as I commonly refer to you. Um, I remember my first day in Hingham, Mary. It was in March of 2016. I came into the building full of anticipation, nerves, anxiety, and excitement. As I entered the selectman's office, it was you, Mary, that greeted me. You were there for that first day as a nervous new assistant town administrator, and you have been a constant presence in my life every day since. To say you were a dedicated public servant, it doesn't begin to describe your time volunteering in Hingham. Yes, Hingham is a better place today because of you. However, I think it's worth a peek into just how true that statement is. I could talk about the countless budget meetings, town meeting prep work, or dog walking at Bear Cove Park. But I think we don't need to look beyond one effort in particular to understand the essence of Mary Power. We all know that you were a driving force in the historic acquisition of the water company, giving Hingham residents control over their drinking water for the rest of time. 
But you always knew that things like that don't happen because of the efforts of one person. So you mentored, taught, encouraged, and inspired the rest of us, volunteers and staff alike, to work harder and smarter, to stay focused and work towards a stated goal of local ownership. The vote that night felt like an affirmation of the thousands of hours of collective work that went into that effort. But what I'm left feeling now a year later is not just a sense of gratitude that the public now has control over its water system. That was a singular win and not worthy of the true benefit of your efforts. No, what the town is left with is a new normal that our entire organization now has and that our entire organization now has an understanding of the effort and talent that should be brought to bear on behalf of the public in all of our endeavors. I believe that is your legacy, one that will drive those that come after you towards great things across varied sectors of Hingham's local government. It's one of selflessness, drive, a tireless work ethic, patience, understanding, a tireless work ethic, dedication, friendliness, and oh yeah, a tireless work ethic. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I, I don't know where to begin, Mary. Uh, you believed in me, you mentored me, you worked beside me and allowed me to grow into the role I enjoy now. We've been through a lot over these last five years together. The office is gonna be different without you but I now know that we can collectively handle anything that comes our way because of the example that you set. So thank you, Mary. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Um, I am now going to turn to, uh, have you I maybe turned to your left or so? I believe your husband is somewhere in the vicinity with something to hand to you from a collective, <laughs> uh, a collective group of us from the office. Uh, Dan, <laughs> I see his chair. Is a secret agent. <laughs> That's right. All of this has left the building for a second. <laughs> <laughs> he went. He went into the basement. Yep. We we know. <laughs> As Dan's getting those things, Mary, we just from our office and the board. We just wanted you to oh. leave with a few mementos of your time um, serving the town in this capacity. And just a quick thank you to Sharon Perfetti, Christine Smith and Susan Murphy for their help with ideas and, and putting this together. Thank you. Thank if you don't, <laughs> <So>. <laughs> if you'd like to open one, you can. This? Sure, if you'd like to open that one, so that. Okay. Many people contribute to this. This is a, a journal that has a bunch of messages, notes, well wishes, memories, oh pictures, etc. Oh. You can see that it's bursting because so many people wanted oh. to share with you, you know, the difference that you made for them, for the community. And we hope that you have some you enjoy reading that and you know, and knowing that you truly made a difference here. This is so thoughtful. I I am going to treasure um, reading each one of these and don't think I better do that at this moment because <laughs> <laughs> because I will get very emotional. I, 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 can't, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the thoughtfulness that went, that's gone into this. Thank you. There's one other. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle can cue hey, this up. Yeah, all yeah, right. It's harder to open, I think. <laughs> the other one is a memento of your time here. Um, oh, my goodness. And we have to thank Susan Murphy for her, um, for her idea about this one. It is something from Woodmont Circles in Weymouth. And we got it for you in the shape of a ship's wheel because of your stewardship of this community. The Hingham Reds on it. Dan, Dan heard ship and he's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <gasps> so I'm going to like try to hold this up. All right, this way. There we go. 
So on the top of it, it says Hingham Select Board. Um, on the bottom, it says Marion Power in 2015 to 2021. And on the back, we put a quote um, that we thought was fitting for Mary, which says, Oops. anyone can steer the ship, but it takes a leader to chart the course. And oh, we just want you to have that as, as a memento of your time here. Oh, this is so beautiful. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Mary. Thank so you. We're not, so we're not done. <laughs> <laughs> so I will now turn the floor over to Mr. Bob Curley, Chair of the Advisory Committee. Mary, first Chair of the Select Board, you're historical. <laughs> And from years of close observation on the Historical Commission, the CPC, and the ADCOM, I want to offer a few comments. And since one of my first principles of public life has always been to never let overly long comments stand between where we are now and the end of a public meeting, <laughs> I distilled the 52 items that I thought about down to three. And the first thing I'd like to say is that for all of us who are volunteers, and I think for all of us who are uh, town employees, you have made us better people uh, because of the performance of your job and your leadership. I thought about getting one of those wristbands and handing it out tonight that, that had written on it, what would Mary ask? <laughs> because whenever I went into a meeting with you, whether it was the advisory committee or the board of selectmen, I said to myself, and I think many others felt this as well, what would Mary ask? And I think you made us delve deeper, work harder, do more research, and even then, we, we were nevertheless challenged by things that your own preparation, you know, on behalf of the town, made us think deeper about um, in, in our roles as volunteers. And I think you've made the town community and our civic discourse better across the board we are better citizens and neighbors with one another because of you. The, the second thing I wanted to say is um, I, I felt like I should give you a new title. Um, and I thought I could say mistress of, no, can't say that anymore. <laughs> and then I said, magister of, oh no, that's a male, that's a masculine <laughs> Latin noun. So I finally came up with <clears throat> guru of the secret sauce. <laughs> and maybe this is an in-joke among those of us that balance the budget every year. Uh, and I know, you know, John Asher and Donna Smallwood and Lucy Hancock um, have seen the secret sauce mixture. And We've all been faced with those moments in the, in the time of town finance where we said to ourselves, oh, God, we've got $800,000 of deficit to, to, to balance. How are we ever going to do this? And every single year since you've been on the Adcom up to the present, we have somehow managed to deliver balanced budgets. And so much of that has been due to your deep and weekend long analysis of the numbers and the spreadsheets and the details. And it's, it's made such a difference to the quality of our town life. And the last thing I wanna say is the way you have conducted yourself a fact is a fact. You know, it's it's not fake news. It's it's a fact. 
people are people. They're all citizens. They're, they're all deserving of equal treatment. And you all, always gave everybody your courtesy and consideration and the benefit of the doubt. And I think you have made the discourse of our public meetings better because of that. You've run a lot of races wearing many hats for the town of Hingham. You've, you've run them all well, and you deserve a breather. So I hope you enjoy it with all the admiration and respect I can offer you and enjoy the next stage of the great process. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Our next speaker is someone you sat next to for a number of years in the Board of Selectmen, um, former Selectman Paul Healy. Counselor. Um, Eric, <laughs> so the time has come. Congratulations, you made it. The, the Rubicon is in sight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We crossed the Rubicon a while ago. Uh, you know, I, I could echo everything what's been said before me, and it would be totally true. I remember the night you got elected, and I was so happy that you were joining me as a colleague. And, you know, I've sat on town boards for a few years now and worked with some really good people, but you're right at the top. And the work that we did together uh, on so many different issues. Uh, it, it just, it was so enjoyable for me to have a colleague like you, uh, fully on time, high speed, low drag. You, you just, you had it all going on. And we were, we were all working full-time jobs on top of being full-time selectmen. And I guess I can't say that anymore, but I, uh, I felt like we worked as a team and I could trust you and rely on you and, and, and look to you for advice and guidance and, and get good advice and guidance. You know, we got past that 10%, which is huge. Uh, you know, I, I think in, in the mind of some people it's faded. You know, I remember the night we went down at Karen, you and I went to Hull uh, to make the pitch to the water company and you were given all the numbers and Karen was doing the governance and I was talking about the cozy nook and it all worked. And <laughs> I mean, that, that, that was the beauty of it. That was when I felt we've got this, we've got this. And, you know, I really truly, you know, congratulate you for the hard work and dedication that you put into the town and, you know, those many lonely difficult moments that anybody sitting in, in that seat experiences. It's, you know, it's a very tough job and the expectations of the residents are sky high, but you've met them superbly. Um, you know, I, I know you're looking forward to a break, a, a, a well-earned one, um, but I hope you will answer the call when, when you feel re-energized because I still think you have a lot to contribute to this town and I wish you and Dan and the boys all the best. Uh, congratulations for a job well done. I, I, Thank I've you. been in this town a little while now and, and you by far and away one of the best select persons uh, that it's seen so well done. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Paul. So our next speaker, Mary, is the last leg of the Dream Team Board of Selectmen, <laughs> Ms. <Okay>. Karen Johnson. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'll try not to read too much into being the last leg. Uh, <laughs> First leg. Yeah, yeah. You'll sense a theme, Mary, uh, because my remarks begin, it's hard to know where to begin. <laughs> it's hard to know where to begin to describe Mary's many contributions to this town. Civic engagement is hardwired into her DNA, and we've been the fortunate recipients of her commitment, her compassion, and her leadership. <clears throat> there's no fame or fortune, well, you get to ring the bell at the farmer's market, but there's no fame or fortune that accompanies <laughs> service on the select board. But one thing that there is, is an abundance of an opportunity for hard work. 
hard work on behalf of and for the benefit for our friends and neighbors. Mary's service to the select board and before that on the advisory committee is the embodiment of that kind of work ethic. In, additional to, in addition to the traditional work day, more often than not, over the course of the last decade or more, you could find Mary late at night, early in the morning and on weekends, constructing a spreadsheet so that we could all better understand the financial underpinnings that facilitate the town's ability to provide services to the citizens of this community, representing the town at countless public events, from Memorial Day to Veterans Day, our recent observance of Peace Officers Day, to Eagle Scout and Girl Scout Gold Award ceremony to 100th birthday parties. Mary brought the recognition and good wishes of the town to those present, showing our support, our gratitude, and our pride in the accomplishments of the members of our community. Or she could be found chairing or attending countless public meetings. A true believer in the power of a robust public process, Mary would join with colleagues across the town to engage the many committees and commissions and the public in the important business of the town, always respectfully and always prepared. My father had an expression he liked to use to describe that phenomenon when the busiest people seem to take on even more than the average person could handle. He said that was like putting five pounds in a four pound bag. I don't know how much Mary was stuffing in her four pound bag, but I know it was splitting at the seams with the full range of select board obligations, a demanding career, and together with Dan, raising two fine young men. The thing with Mary is, she made it look easy. I first worked with Mary when she joined the advisory committee in 2011. <clears throat> she joined Adcom after, after helping to lead a successful debt exclusion override so that we could build and operate eSchool, after serving on the Zoning Permit Study Committee, the Bear Cove Park Committee, the Friends of Hingham Public Schools, and several PTOs. Essentially, she amped up her town volunteerism, just as many of us would be looking to retire. Mary brought an informed and fair-minded viewpoint to the advisory committee, engaging in civil discourse and building consensus on complex issues. Building on the work of prior ADCOM volunteers like John Asher, she took the financial analysis of our town budget to new levels, as evidenced by her development of the Inside Town Finances series. For those, who, uh, for those of us who do not speak fluent spreadsheet, that series is a master's in public administration on municipal finance and a must read for folks who wanna truly understand the rules and conventions governing the operation of town government and its budget. A machine like town government moves methodically, but there were, have been many accomplishments, particularly over the last six years. And Mary has been a critical player in all of those both as a member of the select board and as a member of the advisory committee. Under Mary's leadership, and more importantly because of it, we built schools, we improved our roads and confronted safety issues along the Route 3A corridor. We planned for climate change and seawall improvement in the Inner Harbor. We increased our affordable housing stock so that we can, could control our development destiny. Required proper property to finally provide police and fire and our, and our seniors with facilities that eventually will meet their needs. And we studied and monitored the use of the, debt, the town's debt capacity, reviewed how we spend our capital dollars, maintained our AAA credit rating, and balanced the town's budget every year. And did I mention that Mary helped to lead the town financially and operationally through a global pandemic? <laughs> One other little thing we accomplished again because of Mary's leadership was the acquisition of our water company, now the Weir River Water System. I could spend an entire meeting talking about that. Don't worry, I won't. <laughs> but when you talk about a once in a lifetime generational accomplishment, control of our water future falls into that category. A process that began under the leadership of Bruce Rebuffo culminated this past year when the town operator took control over the company from Aquarian. Nobody better in the room than Mary Power to get this over the line. And I think that it helped that she knew more about the finances of the system than Aquarian and Eversource combined. <laughs> Mary, you set a high bar for selfless public service. You've left an indelible <clears throat> mark uh, and you've made town government, you've left an indelible mark on town government and you've done your best to provide us with the tools to continue your example of professional reasoned leadership that's always in the best interest of the town. I'm sure that this motion to adjourn tonight will be bittersweet, but I hope you know that you have our profound thanks and our wishes for fair winds and following seas as your journey continues. Thank you.
Thank you. Beautifully done, Karen. Thank you. Next up is former advisory committee chair, um, Mr. John Asher. Okay. Well, I've worked closely with Mary since she was appointed to the advisory committee several years ago. Uh, there isn't sufficient time to enumerate all the contributions that she's made to the town during the past 15 years, but I will focus on her most recent contribution, the Inside Town Finances series, which is an outstanding primer in 15 one-page volumes that Mary has published over the past several months on the town website. What Mary doesn't know yet is that there is actually a 16th volume of Inside Town Finances entitled Volume 16, Mary M. Power. At this point, my able assistant, Mary's husband, Dan. <laughs> Dan, I hope you're there out of the basement. It's right here. Excellent. We'll present Mary with a framed copy of volume 16. Boy. Which, in the spirit of the previous 15 volumes, asks questions and then presents answers to those questions. I'm afraid volume to open it. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, it's safe. Uh, volume 16's first question asks, what has Mary Power done? The answer is all the following and much more that has served the town, its schools and its citizens so diligently, generously and significantly for over 15 years, an incredible legacy. And beneath that answer are 21 images of some of Mary's work, including the title pages of two PowerPoint presentations about town finances delivered by Mary in 2019 and 2020. A picture of the select board table at annual town meeting 2019, accompanied by the final slide of Mary's presentation explaining the board's rationale for supporting acquisition of the water company the Weir River Water System logo. All 15 volumes of Inside Town Finances <laughs> with very tiny print. And Karen, I just wanted you to know that. John Asher font. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, a copy of the Excel forecast sensitivity model, which Mary developed this past spring. Volume 16's second question asks, what will Mary Power do now? It answers, take a well-earned rest, do more sailing, and hopefully continue volunteering her considerable talents with an annotation to see talent bank application above right and a big <laughs> red arrow directing her attention to a blank talent bank application form. <laughs> Mary, you can certainly take great pride in your many contributions to the town. And I'm hoping this special edition of Inside Town Finances will show you how much we all appreciate your incredible work over these many years. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have to say that, um, that when uh, every week when I would do one of the Inside Town Finance series, I would ship it over to John on a Friday afternoon and say, hey, John, can you take a look at this? Can you do this? And it would always come back better, always come back better. Um, and, 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 and with a few extra hyphens, <laughs> hyphens than when it went over. Hyphens. But, but hyphen, hyphens aside, it was always better. It was always clearer. And it was reassuring to know that somebody was looking at it so carefully. Very good. Thank you very much, John. Uh, our next speaking guest is Ms. Christine Smith. Is Christine? 
Hi, Mary. Sorry, Hi, everybody. <laughs> I have a little bit of a different perspective um, in that I was sitting around trying to remember when I actually first met Mary, because once you meet Mary, you sort of can never remember what it was like before you met Mary. Um, and that's that's significant. Um, and I think it was sitting around Judy Sneed's table, her kitchen table, as we often used to do the week before a town meeting, discussing our Warren book. Yeah, that was really a thing. Exciting stuff, I know, but that's how we all sort of found our peeps. And uh, thank you, Judy, for that. I see Judy on the call. Um, and I remember Mary being in attendance and thought to myself, wow, she's really smart. And she's someone that I think I would like to get to know better and spend a little bit more time with. And uh, lo and behold, we consequently worked on so many things. Um, our campaigns to pass overrides and debt exclusion votes highlighted for me Mary's work ethic, her, her, her commitment, uh, yes, and her humor. For those that don't know Mary that well, Mary has one of the driest sense of humors that gets us through a lot of things. Uh, we say every once in a while, the snarkiness comes out in all of us. And uh, you don't often see it in Mary, but, 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 but when it does, it makes us all remember that she is uh, she's human like the rest of us. Um, and whenever I showed up at her house in the middle of all those campaigns, it literally looked like a staple store. She had <laughs> color coordinated binders, folders, pens, pencils, you name it, she had it. And uh, I knew that she had me at hello when, when I saw that. And, and she trained us all so well. Um, we roped each other into so many meaningful things over the years. And I'm continually amazed at Mary's ability to juggle, to take the high road, to analyze financial statements, to put together a PowerPoint presentation, to do the right thing, often at her own expense and out of her family. And for that, we are truly grateful. And my hope for Mary, as she leaves this role, is a sense of self-satisfaction, knowing that she gave it her all, absolutely gave it her all. And now she'll have lots, to, lots of time to do as she pleases. Um, I have developed some of my strongest friendships because of this work. So many of you on this call, the, the, the Karen Johnsons, the Judy Sneeds, I could, I, I could go on and on, the Amy Farrells. Um, and I thank them all for their countless contributions to this town. Uh, I'm most thankful to call them with my friends. And leaving you with, what are we all going to talk about now? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mary. Um, thank you. And I think I'm back to Tom, who I know is also going to recognize some other special people on this. Well, uh, if you want to do that introduction, Christine. So we haven't got her yet, but I think the next one might. Uh oh. <laughs> And, and so one of the things that I, that I remember, and, and I remember this distinctly about Mary, is when Mary was considering running for the Board of Selectmen, she said to me, but if I run for the Board of Selectmen, potentially I could be leaving the board when my youngest son graduates from high school, which at the time seemed like that would never happen. Um, and Connor graduated a few years ago, and Brendan is a senior this year, and I, I, it's... You know, you sort of can't get through the day, and and, and they're and they're graduating from high school. So um, Dan and Mary, I think, um, as hard as it will be to have that empty nest, I think um, there'll be a silver lining to all of this. And I and I also thank you, Dan, for you, you're, you're unbelievable. You the, the the way you support this town very quietly um, is is amazing. And I think the Power family um, is is to be thanked because they they, they just do the right thing all the time, um, and they do it so graciously and um, with that, I think I saw the name Connor Power uh, on, and I would wonder if Connor would, would like to say a few words. Yeah, well, thank you, Christine. I'll try to keep this brief because I'm sure that my mom is looking forward to getting off this Zoom like never before. Uh, in fact, she's put up with a lot of pretty arduous tasks like this, and I give her a lot of credit for managing to lead our town in a virtual environment and tackle every challenge in her way up to this point. Uh, to be honest with you all, I've always kind of maintained a fair amount of distance from the town political scene, and I uh, kind of seldom understand some of its initiatives, but it really gives me just significant confidence when I see diligent people like my mom who are willing to work through their, their free time or vacation time or holiday breaks, all in service of something that is bigger than just one person. And while I'm not very attuned to the local happenings, it's always been 100% clear to me that my mom has devoted her time for this cause because she truly believes in the power of this grand system. She had to explain to me a couple of times what it even meant to, to purchase a water company. And I honestly <laughs> can't believe how long she fought to make it happen. 
but I recognize that she went through these strenuous experiences because she embodies the ideal approach to service. I hope that a lot of you saw the article that the Hingham Anchor published the other day where my mom gave some advice to future select board members, quote, to base decisions on what is in the town's best interest, remembering that you represent 23,000 residents, end quote. I consider it a job well done if after six long years, she can still put up with those 23,000 residents. Um, <laughs> so on behalf of all of our family, and I just want to say that we appreciate the dedication that my mom has given to this town, and I'm really glad to see so many of you sharing your support with her. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it back over to Tom or whoever is uh, going forward, and uh, thank you all very much for your time, and mom for your oh. diligent work. <laughs> Great job, Connor. So Mary, um, that's the end of our, uh, of our agenda here. Um, Mary, you've been our leader, uh, some of our boss, and all of our friend. Um, so uh, we're going to miss you terribly. Um, I promised I won't call you until you tell me I can, but then I would suggest you <laughs> get ready because the floodgates will open. <laughs> Dan, that's a, a firm promise, I swear. <laughs> Um, thank you every, for everything, Mary. Uh, well, thank, thank you. you. I, um, well, there's, there's an there. echo. The, um, uh, to see all these faces that were popping up during the meeting and being here, um, people who I admire and respect so much, I, I, I can't tell you how much all this means to me. And, you know, Tom, you're going to be shocked, but um, you know, maybe it's maybe it's because I have to always have the last word. Um, actually, uh, I had a feeling tonight would be a little emotional, and it's important to me to say thank you to many of you on this call and and others for um, everything that you've done. So uh, I'm going to read this and hope I get through it. And before I do that, I just have to ask. Doc Gallo, now that I'm retired, can I go for a ride on that on your boat? You have this beautiful boat in your background. And <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, first, I, I just want to say thank you to the citizens of Hingham for entrusting me with the significant responsibility and the privilege of serving on the select board. Um, I hope that I've served you well. Um, as I began thinking about this final meeting, I wanted to offer some personal thanks to people that have supported me over the last 11 years. And in doing so, I was struck by two things, the number of people that I needed to say thank you to, and the many people who I had to say thank you to for many things. Um, and I consider myself fortunate on both accounts. Um, as you've heard, my path to the select board began by serving on the advisory committee I'm so grateful to former town moderator Tom O'Donnell for appointing me and to the chairs that I served under, uh, Jack Manning, John Asher, Karen Johnson, and Greg McCune. It's hard not to be successful as the chair of the advisory committee when you've had the privilege of watching these four tremendous leaders. Um, and to my EdCom colleagues, Amy Farrow, Mary Jane O'Mara, and Linda Kutch, you taught me how to count my votes, stand my ground, and persist. Um, as I told the Hingham Anchor last week, I never aspired to hold elected office. So the idea of campaigning for office was really daunting. Um, thanks to Laura Burns, I had the good fortune to meet two people, Susan Haley and Carl Harris, both of whom had deep roots in Hingham and they were instrumental in my being elected. Um, their commitment to my campaign just inspired me and, you know, as, as I've been thinking about things in the last few days, um, neither of them are, are with us any longer, but I'm thinking about them. I'm thinking about Susan's husband, Sean, and, and Carl's wife, Susan, today. Um, to the privilege, to the colleagues that I've had the privilege of serving with on the select board, Paul Healy, Paul Gannon, Karen Johnson, Joe Fisher, and Bill Ramsey, can I just say, every single one of them a lawyer. I have served with nothing but lawyers for six, for six years. Um, I'm proud of what we've accomplished together. I've learned from each of you. And while our, I think our different approaches and differences of opinion benefited the town, even if they sometimes made Tom and Michelle's life a little bit more challenging. Um, I'm also grateful to former select board members, Kathy Reardon, Phil Edmondson, 
Melissa Tully, Matt McIver, Bruce Rebuffo, and Laura Burns for your guidance, perspective, and willingness to step up when asked. Um, over the last 11 years, I've, had, I've seen the many ways that our employees work on behalf of our citizens and the town. Each of you plays an important role in making our community such a great place to live, and we appreciate everything you do. I'm particularly grateful to Sue Nickerson, Jean Montgomery, Eileen McCracken, and Kate Richardson for all the information and patient explanations you have provided me over the years. Our open town meeting form of government wouldn't be possible without strong professional support, including former town administrator Ted Alexiadis, former assistant town administrator Betty Foley, Sharon Perfetti, Heidi Gall, our legal team, John Coughlin, Carrie Ryan, Rick Manley, Susan Murphy, and Kevin Feely. Tom and Michelle, I can't adequately put into words my appreciation for your many contributions to the town and the board. Uh, we've been through a lot together, uh, dogs, budgets, financial plans, Zoom bombers, sneaking water company experts into the building without detection, and holding three outdoor town meetings to name a few. Hingham is lucky to have such dedicated leaders, and I know you're gonna continue to provide the same outstanding support to the town and to the board. Hingham runs on volunteers, and every year the talent bank process brings forward citizens who want to serve their town. I'm overwhelmed each year by the willingness of our citizens to share their talents and expertise to serve our community. In my service, I've had the opportunity to work closely with our town moderator, Michael Puzo, ADCOM chairs, Tom Piles, Jim Taylor, Lucy Hancock, Donna Smallwood, Victor Balterra, and Bob Curley. Harbor Development Chair Bill Reardon, Personnel Board Chair David Pace, Tom Carey, Judy Sneath, Mark Cullings, Charlie Berry, and Vicki Donlin. Many, many thanks to each of you. Um, when I started on the advisory committee, I was given typical first year liaison assignments, the kind of small, less complex assignments. Um, one of those assignments was the Water Supply Committee, and well, we all know what that turned into. Um, as, as people have said, history is going to look back on Hingham's acquisition and integration of its water system as a significant event and an example of what our town can accomplish when we work together. I am very proud to have been part of this effort along with so many others, including John Asher, Ed Siegfried, Carrie Ryan, Rick Manley, Paul Healy, Karen Johnson, Dave Anderson, Laura Burns, Ryan Trahan, Russ Tierney. Um, to John and to Ed Siegfried, your guidance and support over the past six years extends beyond our work on the water company. Thank you for always making the time to talk things through and being a sounding board. And to Christine Smith, Amy Farrell, Karen Johnson, Lisa Tully, Don Sibor, and Tina Sherwood, thank you for the walks, the talks, the texts, the dinners that appeared at my door at just the right time, the care packages, and for always finding humor in a situation. You always made the good times better and the tough times easier. Lastly, and most importantly, um, to my family, thank you to my parents and siblings whose unwavering support means more than I can say. Public service, as we all know, is more than an individual commitment. It's a family commitment. To my proudest accomplishments, Connor and Brendan, thank you for the sacrifices you made in order for me to serve the town. And to my husband, Dan, none of this would have happened without you, and there was no one I would rather have by my side. So I think this is the point where we need to move on because... <laughs> oh, Mary, this is still my town... I'm getting, I'm getting weepy. <clears throat> Miss Mary, this is, still my town this is still my town administrator <laughs> report, so I'm going to take it back and make one last comment. As I think we're all think we're all thinking, as usual, Mary's presentation was the best. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to keep it within six minutes. You know how that goes. Um, no, I'll, I'll uh, thank thank you so much. I and you know um, for for people who are watching this meeting, um, for for some of our guests here this evening, um, this is the best of Hingham. This is why we do what we do. Um, and my hope is that um, 
my hope is that as we continue to open up our government and more people begin engaging, they can get the same satisfaction and sense of collegiality and feelings of satisfaction that we've all had. Um, and uh, so again, my my thanks to uh, to everybody who's joined this evening. Um, you've made this a very special and a memorable evening, and and I'm very grateful for that. Um, Tom, I do think that we have. To, I have to make some kind of an announcement about <laughs> Joe. You actually do, yes. <laughs> In <So>. your report. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. We had one last piece so, of business that we had to squeeze in somewhere. <laughs> Joe, do you have anything for Selectman Report? Oh, I've, Mary, I have a full rebuttal on everything that you said. <laughs> 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 and just, just, just remember, after you're off the board, the open meeting law no longer applies. I'll be able to call you. This is going to be very different. <laughs> I, I, I will say, and I said this to the anchor, you know, the, the, the one regret with COVID that, that I've had is that you and Bill and I have not been able to be in the same room for a single meeting this past year. And while the great, it's great that there's so much participation, the, the collegiality that I think we all enjoy um, is something that uh, uh, is something that I missed. Um, but I do need to read that as the current chair of the select board, I hereby designate Joe Fisher to participate and vote on school collective bargaining matters to the extent that such action may be required pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 150E. Got it. So I think- Thank you, Mary. I, th I, think, I, think, that's, uh, I think that's it. Um, Joe, I would, uh, I would accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary, aye. Terrific. Again, thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mary.